Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, August 2nd, 2014. This is episode 1105. Enjoy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy. This is the show where we talk tech. It's like talking turkey, only there's chips in it. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. I shall repeat that in a moment, so I'll give you a moment to get a pencil if you'd like to make a call and talk about mm, computers, sure, yeah. The internet, yeah, well, of course, everything's got the internet in it. It's the internet everywhere. We talk about smartphones a lot. That's really the computer of choice these days, isn't it, for a lot of people? And we talk about home theater. Scott Wilkinson, our home theater guy, is joining us about half an hour from now. So all that stuff. And I guess we could throw in uh, obsolete technologies like standalone GPS systems, camcorders, and MP3 players. 8888-ASK-LEO. 888-827-5536. That's the number toll-free anywhere in the U.S. Uh, or Canada. Kim Schaffer on the phones today filling in for uh, Heather Homan. Oh, let's see what's going on. Apple's acquisition of Beats. The thing I said would never happen happened. And it's done. The, uh, the U.S. has given regulatory approval. Um, Vivendi, which owns the Universal Music Group, one of the big music companies, sold off its portion to Apple uh, at over $400 million. So now Apple, Apple spent more than $3.4 million, $3.4 billion with a B dollars for this headphone company. And they've started to absorb it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I guess we'll uh, find out. Rumor now, September 16th, six weeks from, to, well, from Tuesday, six weeks from Tuesday, will be the Apple iPhone 6 announcement. These are all very sketchy rumors, so don't, you know, don't hold me to this now. But if you're waiting for a new iPhone, I think that uh, your wait is nearly over. We don't know much about it. 4.7 inches, that's a lot bigger. Well, it's 0.7 inches bigger. That's probably not a lot. But it's you know it's it's more to the to the size of a standard phone these days, and uh, maybe some other cool stuff we don't know. I don't know. We don't really know. Maybe a watch, although some of the pundits say uh, announced in October, available in December mm -hmm. for the uh, iWatch. Uh, let me you know. There's some good news that it's it's legal now to unlock your phone. Legal once again to unlock your phone. I should probably uh, make it clear. There's three different things you can do to your phone. <laughs> There's unlocking it, <laughs> uh, there's rooting it, uh, and there's jailbreaking it. They're all three different things entirely. Let's start with jailbreaking, because jailbreaking can only be done to an iPhone. And the only thing jailbreaking does is, uh, well, it does one thing intentionally and one probably unintentionally. Intentionally, it allows you to buy stuff from somewhere besides Apple. Right now, with an iPhone, you can only buy it on the uh, iTunes store, right, the App Store. But once you jailbreak your phone, you've released it free. I'm free at last. And you could buy stuff from other places, none of which probably are a good idea. And uh, there's certainly some question about what you've done to the security of the iPhone. Don't recommend it, but uh, sometimes it's, it's necessary. If there's things you want to do that Apple doesn't allow, you need to jailbreak it. So that's jailbreak. The thing that was most recently made legal, unlocking, applies to any smart, any phone, any cell phone. Because usually when you buy a cell phone from... A company like Verizon or Sprint or AT&T and T-Mobile, it's locked down. It has the logo on the back for the company, you know, and uh, and you can't you can't just bring it to some other company. You have to unlock it. It's better way to just, better word to use probably is carrier locked. It's locked down to a carrier. Our listeners uh, outside the U.S. are probably mocking us at this point because in most other places of the world. Phones are routinely sold unlocked. But in the U.S., because of the subsidy, you know, these phones are tend to be very expensive. The company subsidizes it, Verizon or whoever subsidizes it by uh, by giving you, you know, charging you only 200 bucks for a $700 phone, and then you pay the rest over the two-year period. So they lock you in because they say, well, you got to pay for this phone. 
Congress uh, and has uh, approved a bill that makes it legal to unlock your phone. And uh, the president is expected to sign that. <laughs> of all the things, the pressing issues <laughs> weighing on the plate of Congress, which is now on vacation, now on recess, that was what one of the thing, one of the few things they did. <laughs> okay, good. So now you can unlock your. It's a good thing. People do it anyway, you know, whether it's legal or not. AT and T has offered this for a long time. Uh, if you're a customer in good standing and you've had the phone for six or more months, they'll unlock it for you. What's nice is if now enough you have an AT and T phone and it's unlocked, now you can go to some other carrier, or you can travel with it and you can buy a SIM card, one of these little identity chips, put it in the phone when you get to France or England or wherever, and now you have a phone that works in those countries with a local number. The third thing, rooting, is something you only do to an Android phone, and that gives you the ability to change that phone's firmware. Also a little risky, but in most cases kind of allowed, uh, certainly Android is designed to allow you root access, just as any computer operating system allows you to be an administrator or root um, we don't encourage you to operate that way because if, uh, if you have that kind of power, you know, you can do things that are b b be damaging to your phone, like erase everything on the phone, you know. So they don't ship them with root a access enabled, but it's easy enough usually uh, to, to root it and usually harmless. It, it, uh, you know, the, ri the risk is in, in the actual process. You know, if you do something wrong, you can brick your phone. There's another term. Well, <laughs> I'll add to the glossary. That is, turn this fine $600, $700 device into a very attractive brick. You you don't want to do that. So there are the there are the uh, there are the terms. Unlocking is for all phones. Carrier unlocking. Jailbreaking is for iPhones, and it lets you buy stuff from other than the Apple Store. By the way, you can do that with a, any Android phone. There's just a little checkbox in the setting. You can jailbreak an Android phone by going to settings and unchecking, or checking, I guess allow third-party stores and then rooting which gives you the ability to take that phone and put something else on it all right i've done my my duty my explicatory duty of the day 8888 ask leo the website techguylabs.com once you get there you'll see lots of stuff information from previous shows including audio and video we like to post that after the show and give you a chance if you missed it to listen again plus to comment on any answers if you have a better idea or you have a thought or a question Go on in there, techguylabs.com. Also, a link there to the chat room, a lovely place full of intelligent, good, unusually good-looking people who are there to uh, to help you out or or just to kibitz in the back of the class. Kim Schaffer on the phones, the phone ranger for the day, 8888-ASK-LEO. Give her a jingle. She'll prepare you, and, uh, and we will talk high tech. There are other stories in the news. We'll talk about those and. And I would love to know if anybody has an idea for what Apple can do with Beats. I'd love to know about that. Sell expensive headphones in the Apple Store? Besides that, 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. We will talk about some new phones. In fact, I now have switched. I'm sorry, Kim. I got Kim to buy the HTC One. Then the new one came out. And now I've switched off of the One, even the new one, to this is the OnePlus One. It's another one. There's two ones. Actually, there's more than two ones. There's many ones. This one is from... <laughs> Are you confused? I was wondering what that was. I don't know what... There's a word one. People like that word. Microsoft had, uh, you know, they had their uh, storage, their cloud storage solution, which used to be called SkyDrive. Then they got sued by Sky TV in Britain. So they changed it to OneDrive. And it's the Xbox One and the HTC One. And now this OnePlus One. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite, isn't it? There are many ones. Anyway, this is my favorite one, but you can't get this one, so I don't. I'm hesitant to recommend it too much because uh, there's in such short supply. The company OnePlus that makes this. Um, these are, by the way, they're not sold by any carrier. You can't go to a Verizon store and get them. You can use it on uh, any GSM carrier. That's AT and T or T-Mobile. But you have to get it by playing a contest or getting an invite from a friend. They're very hard to get which makes them extra special, made with unicorn tears. So I'll talk a little bit about those phones, too. Lots to talk about. 8888-ASK-LEO. What do you want to talk about? Leo Laporte, the tech guy.
I was wondering what that was when you pulled that out. <laughs> oh, I love this phone. I, it did not look recognizable to me. The it only doesn't. thing I thought was maybe like a Nokia Lumia or something. Well, it compared. This is the Lumia. It is similar. This is the 1520, which is bigger. Well, not much bigger though. The screen is a little bit bigger. This is five and a half. This is 5.7, I think. So this is the size of a Note uh, Galaxy Note 3, five and a half inches. Um, but 350 bucks for 64 gig, 300 bucks. That's the that's the thing that makes it very interesting. And in every respect, it's an excellent phone. In fact, I really like it because it has Cyanogen mod as the uh, OS, a special version of Cyanogen, which is essentially a pure Google experience. There's no carrier cruft, no uh, no weird apps on here. No, doesn't come pre-installed with anything anything weird. And I just really like it. Well, I have uh, been resigned to the fact that I will always you have an old phone. Yeah, I cannot you keep can't up keep up with, with me. There's no way. Because <laughs> this, you know, I got, you know, it's like, because I, I still like the M8 and the, and the one you have, the M7. The Those M8, are great phones. I would take the M8. The M8's awesome. I should get, well, what carrier are you I'm on? I'm Verizon. I should just give you my old M8. There's something, uh, it's a pretty banged up though. <laughs> oh, did you already drop it? Oh, it's all dinged up and, uh, and, it, and the main reason I, I left it, ago. it started, I know. <laughs> I think uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I th it could be just um, well. I brought it to Hawaii and I dropped it oh. in the rainforest and stuff. But um, it's not I mean it's work. You know what? Let me see if I can. Uh, I'll wipe it and see if it works better because uh, it was working. It was hes is hesitating a lot, and it may just be because of something I had on there. But uh, this is this is a nice phone. I really like this phone. Very simple. It's just a slab. You know, there's no frills at all. But you know, I like I like the way those look. They're well, the one is the best. I mean, the HTC one is really the, the best. I, look I love the way this. You looks. You know, they just they're about to announce it's it's a rumor only, but it's pretty clear that it's true. Um, they're going to put Windows the Windows uh, phone operating system on that on a I one. heard that. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. That'd be a good choice for somebody who wants a Windows phone. I think there's some good choices. So I don't know. I like this phone. Um, let me let me check my one and see if I if I wipe it um, if it works all right. I guess I could probably give you that. You should have the latest one. It's just a little dinged up. You may not. But do you keep it in a case? You do. I keep one. I keep mine in a so case. So you'd yeah. never notice. Yeah. Yeah. The screen's fine. It's just um, the bezels are a little scratched. Scratchy bezels. The battery life on this is amazing. Twenty hours easy. That's really That's nice. That's what they need to work on. I know. But I, on, the, I, on the M8, you can get... I was getting 16 really reliably. Were you? Because this has started to no. really go down. It's, yeah. not, it's not good. Well, they start to wear out. And yeah. then I think part of it, and one of the reasons it was probably hesitating, is as you add stuff to it... Yeah. It gets... The, the sound's not great. Where is Heather? I don't know. She took some time she off. She went to New Orleans. New Orleans, believe, that's what, right. for her birthday, New maybe? Orleans. Is it her birthday? Well, it is next weekend. Oh, it's a birthday Shh. trip. <laughs> it's a birthday trip. I think it might even be a big birthday, but yeah. we won't mention that. Her 30th? Yes. Already? Yeah. Holy cow. That's exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah, the Verizon website had it, so we think it's probably more than just a rumor. <laughs> this would be a this is this would be kind of neat. So you would be able to run that as I like well Android as better. Android? No, you oh, have okay. to choose. Yeah. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That is my number. We could talk about all kinds of high-tech stuff, including, uh, you know, how to uh, how to brick, jailbreak, unlock, or root your phone. <laughs> uh, let's uh, go to the phones and uh, Heather Hammond. Taking the day off, we think for a special birthday. She's in Nolens, so Kim Schaffer's with us today. Hi, Kim. Hi, how are you doing? Great. Who should I talk to first? I think Pat in Corona wants to know how to extend his Wi-Fi signal out to a casino, and I think you know <laughs> I'd like to be able to extend my Wi-Fi signal out to the middle of the street. So why not? <laughs> well, casino? No, a casin a, casita. A, a casita. casita in the back. A casita. The Hello, Pat Leo Laporte. I wasn't sure if she's a casino and sino. A casita. Hi, Pat. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a casino, but uh, <laughs> you know, there's a casino out back. 
So how far so away is the casita? Yeah, I have a casita that I'm renting, and uh, I'm trying to get the Wi-Fi from the main house out to the casita, but that seems to be weak because the uh, wireless router is toward the front of the house, and the casita is maybe about, oh, I don't know, maybe 800 to 1,000 feet back oh. from the main house. Oh, that's a long way. 800 to 1,000 feet back. Yeah. So Wi-Fi typically uh, goes about 150 feet, more or less. If it's line of sight, it can go farther. And 802.11n, uh, or even the better, the more recent, not yet ratified standard, 802.11ac, can go maybe 500 feet or 600 feet. But 800 feet, is it line of sight? Are there trees or anything? Or can you just see straight back to the casita? Uh, you can see straight back. Uh, it'd be a lot easier to string a wire. There's no way you can do that. Just wire, okay. Yeah, because the problem with Wi-Fi is you'd have you can you can buy boosters, and it's uh, you'd have to have boosters on both ends, and there's limits to how much power you could put on a Wi-Fi signal because it's uh, it's unregulated frequencies and all of that stuff. It just seems uh, it's a quarter mile. It's a long way. Um, I'll tell you, though, there are places that you can look at kind of extreme Wi-Fi antenna solutions. If you, if you can wire it, I would. But if not, mm -hmm. um, then there are some uh, websites you can go to to look at creating kind of radio labs is probably the best known and the best one. Creating uh, directional antennas that you can aim back there. It is, it is good that you have line of sight. The pro remember that you'll need it on both sides. So uh, what they'll do is they'll do directional in each direction. You can't just put it on one side. But it's, this may be doable. This may be doable. I don't have much experience with 800 feet. I mean, I've seen, you know, at hacker conventions, they've demonstrated miles. But uh, even at that distance, even wired is going to be tough. Even wired is going to be tough. So... Um, I would go to radiolabs.com, look at their solutions there. They'll tell you how far you can go. Um, two, you want one for both sides because you don't want to just transmit on each side. You want to receive as well. And uh, I think 800, I guess you could do it. Probably cost you a couple hundred bucks. Radiolabs.com. Good luck. Um, I need to get better glasses. That's a tiny, tiny print. It looks like Mackenzie in Grand Rapids. Is that right? Yes, it is. Hi, Mackenzie. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. How are you? I am doing great. I just wanted to tell you thank you. You spend my money well. I purchased <laughs> a uh, Lenovo uh, Carbon X1 for 2014. Oh, isn't that a nice? That's a very. Did you get the touch? I did get the touch. I went, went all out and got the i7 and maxed everything out that I could. Well, you can't blame uh, me for that. <laughs> no, you just okay. that was that was the you decided to do that. But that is that is a that is probably the nicest Windows 8.1 system out there. The, the biggest drawback is a high resolution screen. I uh, I try to run some. Well, I run 3D software on there. That's a, uh, that's a drawback. It's too high a resolution. Well, for modeling, in that it doesn't scale right, so oh. I have to lower the resolution down. Significantly. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, you know, that's a that's something that operating systems should do better. And, uh, you know, Apple's got this high DPI thing. They solved this because of the retina displays on their uh, laptops. And what they do, and, I, and I've been using this on a 4K display. You're right. If you use the native resolution on a high-resolution display, everything's teensy-weensy. Uh, hard to read. I was having a hard time reading the teensy-weensy print on this phone. Well, the same thing on the computer. So uh, the high DPI, what it allows you to do is double the size of everything by using a half resolution. However, when you when you are doing something like a photo or video, it'll do it in full resolution. It's really a clever solution. So your CAD drawings, are they are expecting a certain resolution? No, it's just the, the interface to the software. Some of the software I, I use, they already have it kind of set up where it will, where it will work with uh, 8.1 in the high GPI screen. Um, they used to, uh, Microsoft used to have a DPI setting, and they took that out in 8.1. Yep. So um, you, some you, of them, some of the applications actually have a built-in interface where you can change yeah, it. Yeah, that's what it should be. Using. The apps need to be aware of it. 
Otherwise, you can right-click on the icon and click Properties, compatible for Windows 8, and then uh, disable um, high scaling or high DPI scaling. Ah, that's a good it idea. work on some of the applications. So oh, yeah. ultimately, I had to just drop the resolution down. But other than that, a beautiful computer, and I've absolutely loved it so far. But I know you didn't call about that. What can I do for you? Oh, no, that was just it. I just wanted to say oh. thank you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, you don't have a problem? I don't know how to handle yeah. this. <laughs> the problem is I, I, I put my MacBook Pro down to use the Lenovo. So. Wow. What, <laughs> what, uh, what, what software are you using uh, for your 3D modeling? Um, I'm using several different ones. I use um, Autodesk 123 Design, which is a oh, yeah. fairly inexpensive if you're going to go with their, their Pro Edition or free if you're just going to. Right. They have the inexpensive. Yeah, they have the 123 Capture and all that. Uh, so you do this for for a living? Is this a professional thing or is it a hobby? Um, I a uh, well, hobby right now, but I am going to be opening a 3D printing store in Grand Rapids. So. Oh, that is awesome! That's the future, I tell you. I know. I'm I'm very excited. Really cool. Well, very nice to meet you, and uh, I'm glad you like the uh, X1. That is a good choice. Uh, Lenovo's are really solid laptops. Really do a good job. And uh, I would love to hear from somebody who has a global solution for uh, scaling on these high-res screens. It's not some, you know, I mean, a 1080p screen, that's not so bad. But we're starting to see now ultra-high def, 4K screens, not not just on uh, desktop, but even on laptops, and, and even on phones. And, <laughs> boy, when you have that many dots, you have like 500 dots per inch. It, you know, it's crisp, but you need a way to double things and, and make text bigger and all of that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, Scott Wilkinson, home theater guru, coming up. <laughs> oh, I love having a caller who doesn't have a problem. I am not complaining. Believe you me, I am not complaining. Oh, just wait. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they're, the problems coming. are coming. More money, more problems. More computers, more problems. More technology, more problems. Let me get Scotty on here. Scottalicious. Gene, thank you. I appreciate uh, I appreciate that. Why is this a slow shutter? I guess I switched the mode. I saw you taking pictures. Where you what are you up to there, young'un? Oh, you, I'm just advertising you. Thank like, you. Like Heather does. Heather does that too. It's so nice. Yes. yes. Does she, but does she use screen grabs or does she take pictures? I don't know. Um, she puts screen grabs on after the fact, right, I think. Right, right. Yeah. Right. She's a little techie like that. Smart scene, beauty mode, slow shutter, action, backlight, beach, candlelight, fireworks, flower, landscape, night, night, portrait, party, portrait, snow, sports, steady photo, sunset, theater, mono, sepia, negative, solarized, posterized, aqua, and boss. And boss. Ooh. That's interesting. Wow. I don't really have much use for these, but sketch. Oh, let me take a picture of you. We'll sketch it. Make a sketch. That's not a very good sketch. <laughs> I could do a better sketch. It's kind of a weird sketch. Sketchy. That's sketchy. I like that painting you got last week. Oh, did you see that? I saw that. Isn't That's that wild? Crazy. Where'd it go? Uh, we're going to hang it in the hall. It's right back here. <laughs> we're going to hang it in the hall. That was wild, yeah. Neon. Ooh, I like neon. Neon. It's got live view, which is nice. You can kind of see what you're going to get. Let me just go back, though, to normal. How about normal? Thank you. Dee -dee 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 -dee. It's... Scott Wilkinson, uh, home theater geek. <laughs> hey, Leo. Hey, Scotty. <clears throat> Just wanted to let you know, uh, I did get a Dell laptop for my calibration. Oh, how's it? And you got a cheap one. Uh, you know, Best Buy was having a, a sale, a 15-inch with touchscreen, out the door, 400 bucks. You got a cheap one, and you yeah. like it? Yeah, and it works great. Good. What's the processor in that? Uh, an i3, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It said the software said dual core, so. I e, well, the right. I was it was recommended dual core, and this is a fourth generation. I don't know if that's Haswell or or what, but 
they they call yeah, it that's a fourth Haswell. generation. That's as well. Yeah, that's okay. what you want. So that's what you want. Indeed. So yeah, great deal at Best Buy, my friend Ray Coronado. So Cal Ray Jr. in the chat room. Uh called me up and said, Hey, Best Buy's ha I heard what you said on the show. Best Buy's having this sale. You should go Good. down there. So I did. And I calibrated up my Vizio M series. And it all worked. Yeah, it worked great. And, uh, and it was snappy. Good. Yep. Nice and snappy. What do you want to talk about today? Um, well, a couple things I have in mind, possible possibilities. One is you were mentioning uh, Apple and Beats, and you, uh, you probably know that Bose has decided now to sue yeah. Beats. Yeah. <laughs> so we could talk about that. Or uh, I just posted a very interesting news item. Thank you, Michael. Go ahead. Uh, the, in which some of the Hollywood heavy hitters like Quentin Tarantino and J.J. Abrams, uh, Christopher Nolan, have lobbied the studios to promise to buy a certain amount of Kodak film stock in order to keep Kodak's last film Oh, I saw that. Facility. That's a great story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So hang on, and, here we go. Okay. Scott Wilkinson's here. Our home theater guru he joins us each week at this time to talk about home theater topics. I Indeed. saw you with, with Joe Kane. No. Was yeah, it was Joe Kane. Joe Kane, Joe Kane on uh, the Home Theater Geeks podcast this week. Yep. Really interesting. Joe's amazing. He's an amazing <laughs> yeah. guy. And he did, have, if you want to get really into the nitty gritty of color spaces, this was a good yeah. show to watch. And we always talk about um, how the next generation uh, films and the TVs and all this will have kind of two attributes that we're looking for. One is higher resolution, ultra HD, the next big thing. The other, higher frame rates, instead of 24 or 30, 48 or 60 or more. Or but more. We don't, but we don't talk about color space very often. Which is... Which is another very important critical aspect of the evolution of the television system. Um, and Joe is as expert at that as you can possibly get. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the name of the show, Home Theater Geeks, the, it's the geeky. podcast, <laughs> was, was well served. <laughs> but I think color space, you can kind of understand what, what that is. It's the, you know, it's what colors... At its at its root, what colors a screen can reproduce? That's and you, right, and, and, and it's not going to be everything that the eye can see. It never will be. See, that's the interesting because, thing because we talk about well, that's a twenty four million, uh, or whatever four million color screen, twenty four bits, four million colors. Isn't yeah. four million colors enough? Well, it turns out it's not. <laughs> no. Uh, for example, uh, the current TV system, which uses a particular range of colors, uh, cannot reproduce the color of Coca Cola Red. Red is tough. It's very tough. I've noticed that. I don't wear red very often on camera because it will buzz, it'll vibrate. The, t the, the TV tries to render it but can't. Right, and it kind of tends to look a little more orange. Yeah. So the, the new TV system coming up, the UHD, Ultra HD television system, uh, which isn't really implemented yet. We have TVs with that much resolution, with that many pixels, but... Um, there's there's very little content coming out, and Netflix is one, YouTube's got some, but they all still have the same range of colors that we're used to. Right. And so what we're hoping for, what we're expecting really in the future, is for that range of colors to expand. And the question is, to how, what should it how? expand? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you can't get them all, so you have to decide what you can't to, get them all, so you got to choose some. Yeah. And uh, he made a very interesting point about how the the most common proposal today is for something from the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, called Recommendation BT2020, which specifies uh, three colors, red, green, and blue, uh, that is much, much wide, encompasses a much broader range of colors than we currently have. But there's a problem with it, and that is that each of the colors, red, green, and blue, are what are called monochromatic that is they exist as single wavelengths and there is no tv today capable of doing it in fact the probably one of the only ways to do it is with lasers and uh, that's going to be expensive wait and wait, gonna... wait 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 a minute lasers in my tv yeah, yeah so exactly is okay so right now the way most tvs work is they have liquid crystal shutters and there's lights right. behind them 
the Correct. LED white, light. white LED light, and then the shutter yep. chooses what color. Are you saying that instead of the LEDs, there'll be lasers, or are lasers going to fire directly into our eyes, or what? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I, no. I, I don't know. See, I don't, I don't quite, I can't quite visualize how lasers would be used <laughs> in a flat panel TV. That seems to me to be a pretty tricky thing. Well, I guess if you could have a, a laser per pixel, because all laser is coherent light. If you could have yeah. a laser per pixel, you could have direct firing TV that fire actually, right to your retina. It, actually, you'd need three lasers oh, yeah, per yeah. pixel. Red, you'd green, need a blue. red, a green, and a blue. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, you remember some years ago, Canon and Toshiba had a technology called SED. Right. Uh, silicon was, emitting diode or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Silicon electron emitting. I forget exactly what it was called, yeah. what it stood for. But it essentially had individual CRTs, cathode ray tube, wow. uh, per pixel. Uh, and it looked gorgeous, but there were some legal things that kept it from ever coming to market, so we never saw it. I saw that I saw it demoed a few times, and it was like, whoa, man, that was great. But we never saw it to market. I think the first application of lasers, uh, well, it already has happened once. Uh, Mitsubishi had a laser-illuminated rear projection TV some time ago called the Laser View. That was laser illumination, though, right? Correct, so, yeah. correct. And, you know, one, you know, you might be able to use something like that, but rear projection TVs are dead. They're gone. There's no, they are no more. So everybody wants flat panels. So I'm not quite sure how to do it in a flat panel. It's easy to do in a projector, in a front projector. Right. So if you have a dedicated home theater with a projector firing onto a screen, uh, you know, I can see that happening and getting that BT2020 color space. But there's another problem with it, which is uh, human factors. The Because the... Um, the wavelengths of the red, green, and blue are so narrow, they're essentially just little lines, a problem with a funny name called metamerism oh, yeah. comes into play. We which see is, this in uh, black and white printing, color, uh, black and white photo printing. Exactly, which yeah. is people don't necessarily see the same color. Right. Uh, and it's becomes it becomes more pronounced when the red, green, and blue primaries, as they're called, are very narrow bandwidth. Uh, so that you put up an orange based on these very narrow bandwidths, and one person will say, yeah, that looks kind of orange, and the, the other person will say, no, 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 that looks kind of brown. But when you have wide bandwidth primaries, which is what we have today, uh, everybody can agree much more much more on what color is being displayed. Yeah. So that's a problem that we need to think about as well. Wow. According to Wikipedia, a laser color video display uses only two or more individually modulated optical laser rays of different colors to produce a combined spot mm -hmm. that is scanned and projected. So it's like the old uh, phosphor televisions where it would yeah. scan across the image plane yeah. uh, using a mirror system. Oh well, uh, but again, again, that's, oh, well. a, that's a that's a projection system. I don't see how they're going to put lasers into a flat panel TV, right. especially a, a really thin one, which everybody wants. I want a TV with freaking lasers. <laughs> I don't know why that's so hard to do. Oh, they should have they should have bolted lasers onto the sharks in Sharknado <laughs> too. No, uh, don't go there. So, okay. uh, <laughs> so I see that the price of OLED TVs is dropping, and now LG is offering a 4K OLED. Yep, they are for a mere eight thousand dollars for the sixty-five inch. I think for sixty-five inches, I paid yeah. nine for my fifty-five 2K. Yeah, already well, obsolete. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Is it worth getting a 4K uh, OLED TV? Do they look? I haven't even seen them. Well, I haven't, uh, other than on a show floor like at CES, yeah. I haven't really too much either. I mean, one of the points Joe made, and I'll make it real quick, is that I've always said, no, don't get a 4K TV yet. Wait till these standards settle down. And he said, no, no, you can get it now. If we design the system right, it will still be able to feed the, the current TVs, and they will look as good as they possibly can. They won't show you everything that's in the new system, like the expanded color range, but it'll be uh, good enough and it won't be obsolete. And I was very heartened by that. Yeah, I, I, heard, I listened to the discussion of how we deliver. 
he 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 says the delivery starts from the camera used in the in the motion picture all yep. the way to your television set and how we can come up with standards that will deliver the best quality picture your set is capable of Correct. without leaving the old stuff behind but you know what yep. there's many a slip twixt the color and the tv <laughs> Scott Fair Wilkinson, enough. avsforum.com, and our Home Theater Geeks podcast. Great to talk to you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's apparently, Consumer Reports just published a review on OLEDs. Did they say wait, Dr. Ma? Uh, I, haven't seen the, I haven't seen the Consumer Reports piece. I'll have to log in. I have an online subscription. Oh, yeah. have an actual subscription. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to see what they said about it. Uh, probably by uh, probably by Jim Wilcox, uh, one of their there, their senior are writer. They good, are they pretty good on the TVs? They are actually. They've gotten a lot, lot better. Uh, my colleague Mark Henninger has visited their TV testing lab, and it's very nice, very sophisticated. Huh. So yeah, they. I w I would trust their TV reviews. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Well, I don't know what they. What did they say? Did they say to buy it? Buy, try, I don't, don't buy. I'm asking. I don't know. I'm asking Doctor Mom. She uh, ah, uh, Doctor Mom might know. They did love. I remember the uh, OLED that I bought, and apparently they still love that. So that's. And in fact, that OLED I think that you bought is going to be in this year's Value Electronics Flat Panel Shootout. Uh, it's a retailer oh. in Scarsdale, New York. It's God, I be hope in a we win. Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that Vieira consistently won for years and years. It, and it years. is, and yeah. Panasonic's not even in the contest this year. They, they don't make it anymore. They declined to participate. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, why I thought would so they too. do that? Well, I think they've got some sort of exclusive deal with Best Buy, so or some retailer. I don't remember if it's Best Buy, but. Um, uh, uh, oh, this is a retailer that does this. This is a retailer that does ah, it. Yes. I see. Yes. I see. So that's a problem. So there are some Samsungs. There's a Sony, one or one Sony, I think, a couple of LGs, and a couple of OLEDs. Good. Uh, Good. Um, so, you know, and there are some that are 4K, and there are some that are 1080p. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if they're going to be judged separately or all in one pile. I don't yeah. actually know. Uh, but we're going to run a lot of coverage on it. Um, it's uh, August 16th and 17th. Let's talk about it next week to warm people up to it. That's sure, great. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Good idea. That's a big That's a big topic. It is. It is. It, this is their 10th annual one, too. Joe Kane will be there, in fact, giving a presentation. Oh, neat. As Gosh, I'd will. love to go to that. Can you go I to would it? I would, too. Yeah, you can. Sure. Where it's is it? Scars Scarsdale, Scarsdale, New York. I wonder if I should send somebody to that. Uh, that would if be you a good do, thing for us to cover. It would. Oh, absolutely. Um, Boy, that'd be a let me thing. know, and well, I will I put you in touch. I would touch send with... you, is who we would send. Well, <laughs> uh, I, and in fact, I was thinking about going, but uh, it turns out to be impractical for me. Oh, okay. Um, but if we, okay, maybe, uh, huh, yeah, or maybe I could find get Robert Heron out there or somebody. It'd be really fun. <laughs> Dr. Mom's would, only an hour away. Dr. Mom could be our... <laughs> Dr. Mom could go. Yeah, but I kind of was thinking of a home theater expert and with no no disrespect, Dr. Mom. But, I mean, well, I don't know. I guess you could just go and report on it, right? Yeah, sure. I'm going to have... My colleague, Mark Henninger, is going to be there. He's my uh, senior Maybe we writer. Can, get, at can, we, can we get Mark to uh, talk to us? Absolutely. Oh, that would be great. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure absolutely. which show, maybe a TNT, but... Um, uh, oh, good. he'd love to. Would you would email me with that. his contact info? Absolutely. That's how we'll do it. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Because he's going to be there. Yeah, he is. Um, and I'm going to do my Home Theater Geeks show on the following Thursday All with, about with, 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 the, with the head, the owner of the store and Great. one of the calibrators. Great. Uh, but if you want to have Mark No, on, I think what we'll do before you do that, and then we'll plug you with the interview. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm trying perfect. to think of okay. what, what show we'd put him on. Um, awesome. You yeah, just, no, Mark. Mark would just be like happy a, you know, like, hey, Mark Henninger's there. They're good. It's going on right now. That kind of thing. A three minute, you know, interview or something like that. Sure, sure. I've used up all your time, but we'll. You're gonna stick around. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo's the number. Mike is on the line from uh, Marengo Valley, California. Hi, Mike. Hi. How you doing, Leo? I'm well. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. 
Um, my question is, um, first off, I'm, I'm a gamer, and uh, I was forced to, when the new systems came out, I got an Xbox One, and I had to switch. Uh, I live in the country, so uh, obviously I have very limited uh, people I can go to to get uh, Internet service. And yeah, I, the, and the Xbox One, one in fact, they, they very insultingly, when they announced it, and this was a big black mark, I think the guy who said it got fired, said, well, it wouldn't be a good gaming machine for a nuclear submarine because you need to be online all the time. So um, having not bad internet access, I guess, would really make it not such a great uh, gaming console. Yeah. That's so anyway, what I did was I switched from uh, one carrier that was uh, charging me per gigabyte to uh, uh, one of those blue ones that uh, has unlimited. Yeah. And when I got it, they advertised, you know, at best one to two MPS per, you know, as the... Uh, Download speed. Well, and, when I checked it out, when I in the test period, I was getting like point three five. Yeah, and yeah. which was about the same as my other one, which was fine because the only reason I really wanted it was not. I didn't expect to be able to game online. I just wanted to be able to handle the downloads for anybody that gets one of the new systems. And in the situation, be prepared for a huge five ten gigabyte just for updates and stuff. That's right, all the time. So, so I thought, you know, and I was tired of having to monitor my... So your only choices out there are satellite uh, carriers? Satellite ISPs? Well, this, this one is not. This is another tower. Um, can I mention names or something? Oh, yeah, always, always. Okay, well, I had Verizon, and I got good signal strength and everything was fine, but, you know, they charge you so much per gigabyte, and yeah. it's not cheap, as no. we all know. No. That have used it. And uh, so I tried this uh, Cyberonics, and uh, they were unlimited. So I thought everything was, you know, that would be good, even if it was the but, same but the speed, speed. was slow, yeah. Yeah, but it's not even close to being what they said it would be. Yeah, it's yeah. very, wireless Internet is, is tough to do well. Um, but I can't, I can't figure out why it won't do any better. I bought the, uh, the you know, it's $200 upgraded I, antenna. I can see the tower from my house, but it doesn't matter. I can completely unplug all the three antennas that I got. And just, just well, have you them. have you asked them? What do they say? They don't tell me much. <laughs> that's <laughs> because always, that's they, because they always say that the tower's down or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I would guess that's because you're getting what they expect you to get. Yeah. Have we learned something here? ISPs lie. Um, they oversell their speeds. Often they'll say things like up to a megabit a second. Well, what does that up to mean? Anything below a megabit? Right. Up to means if you're on a really good day with the wind at your back. So, um, yeah, I, you know, Verizon, I was just reading an article that said, you know, Verizon charges, uh, I think, $15 for gigabyte per gigabyte of down uh, above over and above whatever you paid for your you know monthly allotment uh, in. Uh, I was just reading they, they charge about 10 times more. Than uh, a French internet service provider in Sweden, it's sixty-three cents a gigabyte. So, why is it so expensive? Well, because they're a monopoly. Effectively, we really only have a couple of big internet carry, you know, cell phone carriers in the country, AT and T and Verizon, and there's no competition. So they get to charge whatever they want. Verizon's moving people off the unlimited download to shared plans, which are very expensive. Um, they do that in a variety of unusual and, I think, anti-competitive ways, and nobody's stopping them. So we overpay, um, and you're a victim of this. Now, you're also in a fairly remote area, I take it. Well, it's it's not that bad. What what I can't figure out is I can see the tower is only it's well, but the it, tower I understand. that I'm going off of. But seeing yeah. the tower is, not, is only one part of it. How many people are using... Okay, so... Yeah. The, the way they do this, they have a backhaul to the tower, which offers a certain amount of data. Probably what they're selling you, a megabit and a half or a megabit. And then if there's 100 people using it, well, good luck. So, That's what I assume is happening. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and they don't. you read it carefully. They don't promise you. This is the difference in consumer Internet and, uh, and commercial Internet. Commercial Internet, they have something called service level agreements in which they guarantee a certain minimum 
That's not what they sell you as a consumer. What they sell you as a consumer is a maximum up to speeds up to, they might as well say speeds up to a thousand gigawatts a second because up to means anything below that. It's meaningless to say speeds up to, uh, but that's how they sell it. Uh, so I don't. I, I really don't know what the answer is for you. It's not something you're doing wrong. I mean, I don't think there's anything magic you can do to fix this. This is what they are offering. You might try it in the middle of the night and see if it's better. You know, if it, if at 2 a.m. it's better, it's per, because they have overburdened that tower. There's too many people using it in the day. It's a shame because, and this, and this is why it's even more of a shame that the Xbox One and other modern console gaming systems require uh, always-on high-speed internet. You're going to see more and more of that. A lot of the things you want to do uh, with these things uh, require fast internet, and they're really just uh, they're really just suitable for people who live in metros. <laughs> that's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I do recommend a site called uh, BroadbandReports.com. Uh, this is a, a site, community site, where people uh, talk about their experiences, upload their speeds. And it'll give you a better idea of what's available in your area. They actually have, you can enter in your zip code and they'll like give you a directory of all the internet service providers there. And then you can look at user reviews and get an idea of uh, what they can offer. I'm sorry, I, I wish I had an answer for you, it's not, but it's not something wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. It's not, it's not you, it's them. It's like a bad girlfriend. It's not you, it's me. Except they think they try to make you think it's you. We we are in a very broken system right now in our internet access. We've talked about that before. Tim in Chino Hills, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Tim. Hey, how you doing today, Leo? I'm well. How are you, Tim? Hey, we're hanging in there, working hard. Good. What are you doing? Awesome. You digging uh, ditches? No, nah, no. Nah, I'm actually I'm an electrician. And I'm hanging some industrial uh, filtration units today. That, so. that that is hard work. You. I tip my hat to you. <laughs> For having a good time. All right. So uh, I'm also, I'm a business owner, and uh, I'm looking at, you know, sort of carrying around my big laptop all the time. I was looking at one of these uh, Microsoft Surface units, yeah. and I uh, just wanted to kind of get your take on uh, whether or not they're really worth the money, or should I just go ahead and stick well, it out with my laptop? I should condition what I'm going to say here with the fact that I am not a big fan of Windows 8.1. I um, or Windows 8 of any flavor. Windows 8.1 is better than Windows 8. But if you need a Windows machine, I think the Surface Pro 3s are very nice. They, the advantage they have. I mean, I, you know, I like a laptop. In fact, I use an Acer S7 laptop. Thin, light. It's got a real keyboard. It's actually attached <laughs> and all of that. But if you want a hybrid tablet laptop experience, the Surface is one of a number of convertibles that give you that capability. You snap the keyboard on, it's got a kickstand, it's like a laptop. It's very much like a laptop. Very nice touch screen, beautiful screen on the Surface Pro 3. In fact, I think DisplayMate uh, just reviewed the screen. It says one of the best screens they've ever seen. It's a gorgeous screen. Uh, and the keyboard, not great, but okay. Very light, very portable. If you need Windows 8, I don't recommend it, but if you need it, I think it's a good choice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. But I've always said, friends don't let friends drive windows. Shoot, a lady hung up that I really wanted you to take. Oh, what did she want? <laughs> well, she's going through a nasty divorce, and I guess her husband is getting into her email. And yeah, all of her we stuff get that one a lot. Hard drive, and she wants to figure out how to keep him out. I'm glad she hung up. That's a very <laughs> but she hung up tough one to do. Yeah, yeah, I figured it was. Yeah, Mr. Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek. Woo! You take it away, Blue Jay. I'm going to get out of your way here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Happy to see you all on a Saturday. Uh, it's funny, we, Leo and I ended up talking about something else on the segment, but uh, if you haven't seen the news yet, it's kind of an interesting piece about uh, Quentin Tarantino and some of the big Hollywood producers and directors uh, getting with the studios 
uh, because Kodak is uh, in serious trouble. And if they go under, uh, or at least if their final, their last film production facility goes under, uh, there won't be any movie film anymore. And some of these directors really prefer to shoot on film. Now, distribution is another thing. We're not going to, you know, film distribution, movie distribution on film is pretty much dead. Um, I mean, there still are a couple thousand theaters in the U.S. that show movies on film and certainly also around the world. Uh, but even around the world, the number of digital theaters is far, far beyond movie uh, film theaters anymore. But we're talking here about capturing, capturing the image on film versus on uh, digital cameras. And that is a debate that uh, is very much like the debate about whether or not you should record music on analog tape or digitally into Pro Tools or something like that. Um, there are those who claim that film, that analog capture, which film is sort of uh, an analog tape, uh, has some quality to it that digital can't capture. And even though it gets converted to digital for distribution, as it does in music, certainly, except for LPs, and as it does for movies, except for those few, uh, theaters that still have film projectors, uh, there's something about it that's, that Quentin Tarantino, J.J. Abrams, Christopher Nolan, uh, Judd Apatow, uh, all prefer shooting or capturing the image on film. And I find this very interesting. <clears throat> so um, definitely uh, check that out on AVS Forum. Uh, it, it's a, there's a good discussion coming uh, that's happening on that uh, as we speak. Uh, Argtar in the chat room, uh, how does your new Vizio compare to Plasma in terms of black level? Uh, it's not quite as good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's not quite as good. Certainly not as my Kuro, which is my reference. Uh, I didn't get a Panasonic VT or ZT60 uh, when they were available. I probably should have. I can still get a Samsung F8500, which doesn't have a smidge higher black level apparently than the Panasonics, but not much. Uh, so I might get one of those, uh, but still, the, the Vizio is pretty good, just not as good. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Mike asks, what new TV has the best black levels? OLED. Uh, or uh, possibly the Sony uh, X950B. Uh, the, the Sony TVs have, uh, LCD TVs have gotten black level down to an art. Uh, by dimming the uh, LEDs behind the screen uh, very well. Uh, even some of their edge-lit TVs look really good in that regard. But I'd say OLED is probably the best uh, in terms of black level. Uh, so that is the answer. Shivers asks, how do I go about finding a decent TV? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the uh, budget is about, I think, $1,500. Yeah, max size 50-inch for this room. Aimlessly browse websites, or is there a better method? Well, don't aimlessly browse websites. Um, certainly come to avsforum.com and uh, look there. That's a pretty overwhelming amount of information, and you get a lot of conflicting information there as well. So I would also recommend professional reviews. Uh, you know, I wouldn't go and judge a TV in the store because they are all way too bright and way too blue under terrible lighting conditions, not at all like what you'll have at home. So going to the store and evaluating TVs there is not a good way to go. Uh, so professional reviews, I think, is really, in my opinion, the best way to go because professional reviewers know what to look for, know what's important, what's not, explain it all to you in their reviews. And the places that I go for for TV reviews uh, include uh, soundandvision.com, um, CNET.com is also a good place. Uh, Consumer Reports. I was talking with Leo about Consumer Reports, and uh, their TV reviews are actually quite good. So that's another good place to go. Um, another place I found not too long ago is called Artings, uh, R uh, -I -N -G -S com, And that is... Um, uh, surprisingly, uh, a really nice place that I hadn't heard of before. Let me just make sure if that's in fact true. Um, I'm going to go to rtings.com 
And there it is. Yes, find your TV. Uh, I, I'm very impressed with these guys. They really do a great job. So that is another place I would definitely go to look for TV uh, reviews uh, that are trustworthy. And that's that's another piece of the puzzle is you want your reviews to be trustworthy uh, from people who you can trust will will steer you in the right direction. My own philosophy and certainly though that of David Katzmeyer at CNED and Tom Norton at Sound and Vision, and I think these guys at Artings as well, uh, is you look at the TV, you put it through its paces, you say what you like about it, you say what you don't like about it. You say what features are useful and what features you think are not useful. Although what features may be useful for me may not be useful for you and vice versa. So uh, there is a, a bit of that as well. Uh, Lawn Dog asks, what gigahertz is my new computer's i3 processor? I believe it's 1.8 gigahertz. So it wasn't quite two. The software company, SpectraCal, that makes CalMan, the software that I'm running for calibrations, uh, want, recommended two gigahertz uh, dual core. Uh, but this is the i3 Haswell. Uh, and so uh, I actually called them before I bought the computer and said, is 1.8 gigahertz okay? And they said, oh, yeah, sure, fine, absolutely, no problem. Uh, Hartley's asking, any good 3D movies out now? Uh, gosh, I haven't been to the movies in a while. I hear Fire and Rescue, uh, the new Planes movie from Disney, uh, is, is good 3D. Um, I thought Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, was superb 3D. They didn't go overboard with it. It's what's called narrow 3D, so it's not really in your face. Uh, but it's really, really excellent. So I if it's still out there. I was a little disappointed with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's uh, where I haven't seen that one. Well, yet. it's converted. Ah, I think it is because it said conversion by, which sounds there you like go. they converted it. Yeah, which is weird. Why wouldn't you shoot that in? Uh, Why wouldn't you shoot in 3D? Well, 3D. because there are. It's it's a little harder to do that. Uh -huh. It's easier to do in post production because you can then say, "I like it this way." No, nah, you didn't quite get it. Try it again. But if you're shooting in 3D and you miss something, then you have to go back and shoot the scene again. It's very mild 3D, so. Right. Hey, thanks, Leo. Not worth seeing. Thank you, Scott. See you later. You bet. Good movie, but don't worry about 3D, I guess. Yeah. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about computers, the internet, cell phones, home theater, digital photography, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the number. 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Uh, website techguylabs.com, that's where we put links to all the stuff I mentioned, so you don't have to write anything down. You could just go and uh, visit the website. All the shows are there, audio, video, hour by hour, day by day, question by question, everything's there. Techguylabs.com. Now, I've completely screwed up my phone by... <laughs> I was trying to make the text bigger, Heather, uh, Heather uh, Kim, and now I can't read anything. Should I just read them off? No, 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 I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I must be getting old here. Maybe that's it. Does that happen overnight? Uh, it might. I think it does. I, I feel like some things have happened to me overnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go, let's go to Garden Grove, California. Don's next. Hi, Don. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yes. Hello there. This is Don. Hi, Don. Hi. Don. Hi. See, uh, I, I have a friend of mine who lives in an assisted living uh, complex, and he has this nice laptop, I mean, a uh, tablet PC, and... Uh, we were trying to do some printing, but it turns out where he's located at, he would need a, a, a Wi-Fi router and so forth and a wireless printer to do this. And I was curious, does anybody ever make any kind of a interface for a, a blue, for Bluetooth maybe? What kind of uh, – yeah, there are Bluetooth printers actually. What kind of, la what kind of uh, tablet does he have? He's got a, a Samsung – I think it's a ten, Tab 10 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So um, – Android tablets, which that is, uh, also have the capability to do something called uh, cloud Google Cloud Print, which is uh, internet printing. They can print to any printer that's cloud print capable anywhere. Mm -hmm. So one thing to, to check is, if does the assisted living facility have a printer anywhere? Uh, I'm not sure. 
He doesn't have internet access, though, I gather. Well, there's Wi-Fi, but, you know, there's no way they can, you know, I've already can talked he get to on the Can he get on the Wi-Fi? Does he use the Wi-Fi for internet access? Oh, yeah, yes, he okay. uses that. Uh -huh. So, but, if, now, of course, they probably don't want to do this because it would involve expense, but if the center had a, a, a network-enabled printer, he could print to it. Uh, yeah. And he, if it were cloud print enabled, it'd make it very easy. But uh, they probably don't want to, you know, hassle with that, which is too bad. Yeah. So there are a number of printers that can print uh, via Bluetooth. Um, oh, red, huh? they, they tend to be photo printers. What kind of stuff does he want to do? Oh, just text. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Canon, I mean, the Canon Pixma is, uh, in some cases, not all of Bluetooth compatible. Uh, mm -hmm. HP makes some Bluetooth compatible printers, the Office Jets. Um, so yeah, you could have he could have in his room he could have a little uh, inkjet printer that would be printable via Bluetooth. The issue is not the Bluetooth though. The issue is the tablet. Uh, right. The thing to understand about tablets, they're not like regular computers in the sense that you can just install drivers. You need to find a printer that will work with that tablet. And that's a little bit more challenging. The tablet has to have its own, have that capability of printing to that printer. You know what I'm saying? Right, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if the chat room has any experience with these uh, Samsung. It, which one is it? Tab 10. The Tab 10. I believe uh, it. Yeah, that was last year's uh, tablet. Very nice. You know, I think a tablet's a good choice for a senior because they they do everything they want to do. It's They can't get into too much trouble in terms of uh, malware and that kind of thing. When the when the person who pretends to be from Microsoft calls and says, "We see you have malware in your computer. Can we please uh, fix it?" and that kind of thing. Um, so Epson, Doctor Mom's telling me Epson and Brother uh, can print from Android tablets directly. You're going to need. That's what you're going to need to do is find a uh, a printer that will be both Bluetooth and print from that Samsung tab. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'll tell you what. I'll see if we can figure this out. I mean, Samsung makes printers. I wonder if they make a printer designed for their tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have something called uh, Samsung Mobile Print. So, yeah, I think, yeah. So there's an app. Okay, here we go. There's an app you can put on your Samsung tab. It's called Mobile Print. And it will then print uh, mobily to uh, uh, anything you can connect, even a Bluetooth printer. So first put that app on there and then see mm -hmm. what printers that uh, it, would, it would work with. So it's called the Samsung Mobile Print app. Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that basically what that does is uh, it, it's a driver for, for wireless printers. Mm -hmm. So that's, okay. that's exactly what you need. And uh, it looks like you can print from a variety, broad variety of uh, documents, including camera, uh, Google Docs, uh, web pages, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that's, I presume it's web pages that he mostly wants to print. Email sometimes. Email, okay. Yeah, you know, and jokes. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what else? The old of course, he sure. wants to print those jokes out. <laughs> hey, as long as he doesn't forward them to me, I... Uh, I Right. I support that. <laughs> Print them out, do anything you want, just don't send them to me. Uh, uh, I know, I live for that. Oh, I was on quite a few of those uh, mailing yeah. lists. Yeah, people, uh -huh. people very kindly. So uh, Samsung can print to a variety of printers. The printer, because he doesn't control the Wi-Fi network, it's probably best not to get a Wi-Fi printer, uh, although it might work, but I would think a Bluetooth no. would be a better choice for you. So. Yep. Okay, well, thank hey. you. Oh, can I tap you for a, just a quick question? Sure, Don, sure. I, I pr uh, partitioned my hard drive on my desktop machine here, and I've got um, Windows 7, and then i got a middle partition there, which is I call data, and the last partition is Windows 8. And I'm trying to figure out how do you, what, for example, if my photos are, are right now, they're sitting on the Windows 7 part of that partition. Yeah. Uh, how do I get that to share the uh, the data drive so that the seven can get its uh, get files and everything from the uh, the data drive as well as the uh, the Windows eight can use that same. You can see the drive from both versions of Windows, right? Yeah, right. But you can't open the files because it says you don't own these files. 
Is that well, right? I never really got that far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you could see the if you could see the the uh, the directory, the folder, mm -hmm. uh, open it up. You're almost certainly going to get a warning saying, "Hey, these aren't your files." And that's because they're owned by the person logging in on whichever operating system created that folder. But you can, and if you Google it, you can find this step by step from Microsoft. Take ownership of those files, or oh, better okay. yet, or better yet, make those files kind of not not owned by anybody, so that you can access them. It's a file permission issue. Oh yeah, okay. Does that, that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to get you got to get that so it's owned by both Windows Seven and Windows Eight logins, and then it's a shared folder. There are other ways to do that too. It's um, it, you can you can uh, do that. Uh, uh, via network sharing. There's a variety of ways to do that. But I think the simplest thing would be just to have that folder be visible on both partitions, both the Windows 8 and Windows 7 partition. This would be a good one. If I bet you there's some IT guys listening and say, well, not only oh, if you want to use SMB uh, partitions, you can do that as well. And if you want to add that to our uh, show notes, that'd be great. Just go to techilabs.com and uh, look for the first question in hour two. <laughs> and you can in the comments there. It'd be very helpful. Anytime you hear something, you go, oh, I know, I know a way to do that. Or maybe you, heard, maybe you have a great long-distance Wi-Fi antenna for our caller last hour. Something like that. Just techguylabs.com. Don, great to talk to you. Thank you for being a, a tech support for our uh, elders. That's always a great thing to do. Uh, they get so much out of it. I'm sure if you have an older parent or relative, uh, if you've ever set them up with a tablet or a computer, they get, it's really great because it, even if they're... Uh, stuck in an assisted living facility they can't get around much that really opens the whole world to them this is a great thing to do and then you're going to have to do some tech support but it, it's nice it's a it's a mitzvah leo laporte the tech guy 8888 ask leo that's the number uh they tell me that the samsung printers work best with the samsung tablets that would make sense more of your calls right after this yeah i remember showing regis the internet for the first time <laughs> Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Uh, ask Leo. That's the phone number. Tom is in Warren, Ohio. Our next caller. Hi, Tom. Hi, Leo. I missed you last month out in Petaluma. Oh, you were here. Yeah, I was there on the sixteenth. You got you and Lisa did the uh, business update, and uh, I got there about five thirty. Watched oh. uh, Chad and Dick. Do I'm sorry things. we missed you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great trip. I had a wedding to go to out there. We have an open studio, and uh, we we mm -hmm. encourage people to come by anytime. And uh, if you if you email tickets at twit.tv, that's the uh, that's the podcast site. Uh, we'll put a chair out for you. Make sure, but we'll also yeah, tell you I if we're here. here. <laughs> if we're not here, we'll let you know. Yeah, I stopped in the next day also oh, and watched uh, Padre, and uh, he was doing know how, and that oh, was good. that was a great. Uh, thing to see your. I think we must we must be there. we must be crazy. I never heard of a television or radio station just let people wander in off the street and sit there and watch a show <laughs> that's great that's, that's kooky great. that's kooky what who's whose idea was that oh it was mine so what can i do for you <laughs> well i spoke with you last time about getting another router and we pretty much wired that out i was just having some issues what'd you what'd, what'd you end up getting for the router just out of curiosity i'm not i didn't get anything yet but i'm about to i'm gonna probably get that uh acer one yeah yeah, that's yeah, the, the Acer's that done review. an interesting thing. They've decided to uh, put, instead of writing their own firmware, all the router companies do this, and they usually do a terrible job, they've decided to put the open source firmware, DDWRT, on their routers. That way it's automatically kept up to date by all the... Uh, oh, man, that's a good it's idea. It's a great idea, I know. I think that uh, they're, they're to be commended for that. On my uh, iPhone 5S, it doesn't seem like it wants to connect to my Wi-Fi, the router that I have now. The iPad connects fine, but the uh, iPhone just doesn't want to hook up. It, it finds the links. I've got the 5 gigahertz. I've got the 2.4 gigahertz. It finds both of those, and it'll connect if I'm in downstairs to the 5 gigahertz, but if I go upstairs, it doesn't want to connect to anything. And it has been in the past, so I don't know if there's some. It might have some issues with my router. I don't it, know. Incidentally, it's not a Sir, but a Seuss. I always just confuse those two that does it. Yeah, a Seuss. Yeah, Asus. you're right. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. a Seuss, and that's the one you got, right? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one I'm going to go for. Yeah, it's a really, uh, really good idea. I'm not sure why it's now. Is it 802.11n or uh, AC? or AC. It's yeah, AC. I think they all come with that AC, and then... 
I don't know if they go all the way back to BGN and all that. Oh, ones. yeah. Well, that's the key. I mean, because uh, yeah. I don't yeah, know if that iPhone does AC. You might want to look in there. And have you enabled both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz? Yes. Yes. I have them both coming off the router. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and in fact, it sees it. It just doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't want to connect. It doesn't I hold the connection. Up the, uh, settings panel, and it shows the network, and it just shows okay. the little dial spinning. It doesn't ever connect, right. and uh, it, it, yeah, it does. But it seemed like it takes forever. So I went in and reset the network settings on the phone, and that didn't seem like it helped any. Yeah, is it better when you're right next to the router? Because uh, sometimes if you're if you're not getting five bars, the phone may not do as well. That's what I think it is. I have an older house. It's a 1927 oh, model. Yeah, yeah. those those. That's when they build houses well, with often metal in the walls. They had to, you know pl mm -hmm. lath and plaster instead of uh, yeah. drywall. Drywall passes Wi-Fi through without any problems. But if you've got any metals in the wall. Uh, if you have a plaster wall with a metal grid behind it, for instance, that actually acts like a Faraday grid, I have cage. The lath. I have the lath. Yeah, the lath and plaster and could very well be blocking that a little bit. Yeah, I have an amped wireless. Uh, but but you but you would know because if you stood next to the router with the iPhone, it would work fine. Yeah, it seems like it's okay now. I've I've never had an issue with it in the on the second floor, but now on the second floor i'm getting issues with it doesn't want to connect. yeah that's why it's a it's a it's yeah. a, the weaker signal is not doing as well and that's not unusual with mobile devices and i have to say ios has historically always had little finicky problems with wi-fi and i'm not sure uh why you know you'll go to uh, uh public networks for instance uh and uh and the the they in some cases will block ios saying well we just have all sorts of trouble with it you can't. It's hard to block iOS when everybody has iPhones and iPads, but uh, it's just notorious for trouble. So, I think because it works okay when you're next to the router, but doesn't work as well on the second floor, it's just because the signal is not as good. It's your fault. You're holding it wrong. No, no. Um, I guess you could get an extender, and I'm sure ASUS makes them. Everybody else does. Get the extender by the same brand that the uh, access point is. The extender you'll put midway between where you are and where you want to be. Um, and uh, so somewhere that it gets a decent signal from the wireless the base station and can pass it along. I use that in my house. The bigger the house, the more you're going to want to do that. I have a couple of Apple routers spread out around the house. And that, that then they all join together and form a single network. And uh, you're closer to a base station that way. Sometimes they call them Wi-Fi extenders. Uh, truthfully, uh, you probably could just use another router and put it in bridge mode. It'll do the same thing, but an extender is going to be a little bit less expensive. Yeah, metal is the enemy of Wi-Fi. So uh, any kind of metal, uh, any kind of metal, and most wireless signals will be hampered by them, and Wi-Fi particularly. The higher the frequency, the worse it is. So uh, 5 gigahertz isn't going to work as well as 2.4 gigahertz, which isn't going to work as well as 700 megahertz. The long frequencies tend to go through metal better. In fact, that's why those are the, that's where the TV frequencies are, and the, the really good stuffs at the lower frequencies, and the open access, the unregulated frequencies at the higher frequencies, the microwave frequencies. David in Mission Viejo, California. Leo Laporte, uh, the tech guy. Hi, David. Hi, Leo. How are you? Hey, I got a pro I got a project I have having a problem with, and I see if you uh, have a solution for me. All righty. I've got a, a program on iPad. I create a video with scrolling text. It's my work product. I'm trying to output this to a, a PC so I can share it with uh, my clients. Right. And it's it's telling me it's HDCP uh, protected. Oh. And, it, and it's not because it's my it's my <laughs> created content. And you're doing it via AirPlay. How are you sharing it? No, I've got a, a dongle with a uh, HDMI. Um, connection to it and uh, plug it into the um, I had a uh, StarTech HDMI capture card I, I can't get any I can't get any, uh, any I can't get it to record uh, isn't that weird this HDCP the idea is to keep people from pirating uh, protected stuff movies but you made this movie so it's not right. it's not protected where did you make it did you make it on the ipad did you make it on a computer i did i'm using this this cool app it's called iTrial, and it's a it's a video deposition so it has a video ah. 
Hang on, I got to take a break. Well, let's see if we can find a solution while we're uh, while we're in the break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Mm -hmm. So we were talking uh, with uh, David in Mission Viejo. He has a video that he's created on the iPad. And uh, it's, are you a private investigator? Uh, this is for court uh, use in court? Uh, I'm a trial consultant. Trial and consultant. It's a video deposition. So we have a got video, it. we have a scrolling text. I got it. And, and the text is a transcription. Online. You know, I think the problem is not the video nor the iPad, uh, but I bet you the converter that you're using uh, to get the HDMI out of the iPad or something else along the chain is not HDCP compliant. And the device you're playing to expects HDCP compliance. So it has, this is the real problem with copy protection in general. It's just a pain in the behind. And uh, HDCP, which is designed to prevent people from copying, making digital copies of copyrighted material, is set up in such a way that everything along the chain has to be HDCP compliant, even the cable. The converter, the television set, all have to support HDCP or it won't play. So what I'm guessing is that something downstream from your iPad, your iPad doesn't know from HDMI, it doesn't know from HDCP. Okay, the, I'm thinking it's got to be the dongle that, because the, the cables, everything else works, because uh, I've used them before. It's, no, no, it's not that it doesn't work, it's that something, whether it's the TV or the display or whatever, is demanding that everything be compliant and something the iPad's not compliant so that could be it so it's not so you see what I'm saying it's 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 the thing you're playing to or through that's causing the problem okay that's got to be the capture card then what about but, I've got a VGA dongle what if I, I can now put the uh, yeah VGA will not have this problem because VGA doesn't have copy protection but how do I get the sound into pinnacle I, I can now put through the uh, the headphone jack yeah, but I don't know how have you considered it. have you considered airplay this is how Apple wants you to do it you're doing this this is all kind of non-standard oh I've got airplay that would be the way I would do it you airplay from the iPad to an Apple TV and then have that because Apple TV guess what HDCP compliant hey that's a good idea yeah that that's how Apple wants you to do it remember Steve Jobs the reason there's no blu-ray on any Apple devices Steve Jobs famously said blu-ray is a bag of hurt what he was talking about is this copy protection Apple doesn't want to have anything to do with it so the air they'll airplay to an Apple TV that that has to do it otherwise they wouldn't be able to play Hollywood movies so the Apple TV is the uh, HDCP compliant device okay do you have a suggestion on which capture card I should use um and so what? So you've got the video on the iPad. You're playing it into an Apple TV, and you want to capture it. Right. I think Pinnacle's very good. I, I've always used Pinnacle. Uh, we've also used a, a device. The problem with the devices I use, the AVDC, ADVC converters, uh, from uh, I think they're from Grass Valley. Um, they had FireWire out, and I think most of the PCs no longer have FireWire on them. Right. I, I'm, I'm talking about the actual uh, video capture. No, I understand. So yeah. these were these were video converters. See, the problem is you've got digital. you got to convert it. You don't really have to convert it. You just have to capture it. Right. Uh, you have to capture yeah, it onto I can, disk. I can do that with Pinnacle. I can capture it. Yeah, Pinnacle's uh, great. HDMI. I think Pinnacle will be happy if you plug the um, a a Apple TV into it. Because the pinnacle probably is HDCP. See, everything needs to be HDCP compliant. Okay. I, I once you get to the Apple TV, your chain point. will be compliant. The irony, of, of course, of all of this is it doesn't uh, stop piracy at all. <laughs> Isn't that cute? All you have to do is go to any BitTorrent site. You'll see every major Hollywood movie. So the only people that gets in the way, as with all copy protection, the only people who are ever stymied, thwarted, disadvantaged, inconvenienced by copy protection are honest users. So you really, you have to think, is copy protection something you want to do, Hollywood? Because pirates just go around you. It's like putting up a big orange traffic cone in the middle of the street. Bad guys just drive right over it. Good guys stop. So you're basically treating your honest, God-fearing customers as thieves. And the thieves couldn't care less. And this is a perfect example. It just, it just gets in people's way. 
It doesn't prevent piracy. Fred in Reading, Pennsylvania, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Fred. Yes, Leo, I have a, a problem, I think. I had a monitor go bad. It, it came on, and then it blinked, and then it went out. So I just figured the monitor went bad. So I used, Not necessarily, but go ahead. Okay, then I took a TV and used that as my monitor, and everything seemed fine. But after I used that a while, the other night, I have a LX8 cordless laser, and it seemed like when I turned the power on to that, that one made the monitor blink, and now that monitor went bad. <laughs> oh, I'm now, sorry. I shouldn't I laugh. <laughs> uh, the LX8 has XP on it, and I'm, all, I'm running uh, professional Windows 7. Professional. Have you checked your cable, by the way? You know, monitors uh, want a couple of things. They just, they're simple. They're easy things. And they will go black, for instance, to save power if there's no signal. So if a cable's bad, the monitor goes, ah, no. First thing to check. Uh, second thing, make sure your refresh rates are properly set. So uh, a monitor, the fact that the fact that the monitor blinked on at first and said, oh, yeah, and then said no, could be either a bad cable or bad settings, bad refresh rates in the uh, computer, whatever's driving the monitor. Now, the worst case scenario, and it worries me a little bit, when you turn on the printer that blew the monitor, could be bad power. So uh, it would behoove you, it would behoove all of us to not run uh, fragile, delicate electronics like computers, monitors, printers, televisions, stereo systems, right to the wall. It is absolutely a much better idea to get... In fact, a lot of times, and you may think they're upselling you, but a lot of times when you buy a fancy TV or a fancy AV receiver, they'll try to sell you an AV power supply. It looks like, you know, an extender, you know, one of those power uh, doohickeys that you have extra plugs on. But what's in there is surge suppression. You'd bet. You'd pr truth is, I'd rather have something that was even more expensive that would uh, actually um, kind of purify the power. Think of it as a water filter for your power. You don't want spikes. You don't want brownouts. You want some consistency. Usually this thing will have a battery in it so that it can provide some consistent power if it should go down. Uh, it will have uh, it, the more expensive ones are always on. The least less expensive ones are a failover system. That's not what you want. You're looking for something called power conditioning. Uh, and it may be, especially in an older house, that um, your power is, is causing stuff to fry. Every once in a while, somebody will call me and say, you know, I had five computers and they die. Each one of them has died one after the other. And the only thing I, you can think of in that case like that, that must be the power. So don't be plugging it into the wall. Get a power conditioner. Uh, Triplight is a very good uh, uh, company. Uh, APC, also a very, very good company. Uh, both of them make, you don't, you, you want a full-time power conditioner. All right. Either one of those. And I have to say, uh, if you're plugging uh, a TV, an AV receiver, anything, these are all very fragile because they're all basically computers now. They have chips in them. And these chips are sensitive in a way that a toaster is not to bad power. A toaster just heats up because you gave it electricity. So it can have too much. It can have too little. It won't cook. It won't toast as fast with too little. That could kill a chip. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's not exactly a UPS. It could be a UPS. You want power conditioning. It's not... Okay, so... A lot of times you'll look and you'll see a UPS. Not all of them do that. Most UPSs, most affordable UPSs, have failover. They don't condition the power at all. They just... If the power goes out, the battery clicks in. That's not what you want. You want a power conditioning. It might well be attached to a UPS. In fact, it probably is because of the need to provide uh, consistent power in a brownout. So APC makes makes them. Uh, Triplight makes them very good companies, but they tend to be expensive. It's something like this: AV power conditioner. Audio, video, power protection for blackouts, voltage, sags and swells, electrical noise interference, and damaging power transients. That's what you want. And you want it to be continuous. And that's the key. It's S-type. 
This is a good one, but I'm sure it's hugely expensive. Well, they're not that bad. Ranging from uh, 350 to s actually 250 to 600 bucks. <sighs> But you know what? How much did you spend for all that gear? All right. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number, 888-827-5536. Wes in Piedmont, Virginia. Hi, Wes. Leo Laporte here. Hi, Leo. It's an honor to talk to you. Well, it's an honor to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm in the market for a new tablet, and I'd like to use it to beyond the staple activities like e reading email and light web surfing. I'd like to be able to read music off of it, like sheet music saved yeah. as PDFs. Yeah. So I, I don't need something terribly high end. So you need I'm an iPad, my friend. Just bite the bullet. Really? Yeah. You don't think there's anything less expensive that might have? There is. There's lots of things less expensive, and you can read PDFs like crazy on any tablet. But if you really seriously if you want to start dealing with sheet music, the iPad has so many apps that are specifically for musicians. Ah, so many musicians use iPads. For instance, very frequently on the concert stage now, you won't see sheet music. You'll see iPads. Right, yeah. Uh, I've seen those in concert settings. Absolutely. Sure. And uh, there are programs that will do things like transcribe music. will actually write it down into sheet music for you. Um, there's, it's the iPad is is a musician's tool, and I know it's about twice as. I mean, you get a Nexus Seven uh, for two hundred fifty bucks, and of course, if all you need is to read PDFs, not create them, right? Just download them and read them. Right. Yeah, anything will do that. And are you thinking for performance? Okay. Yes, I'm a church musician. Perfect. Yeah, and you can put it on the stand. If you know, if if money is an issue, any tablet will do that. So the cheapest tablet you can find will read PDFs. Um, but I have to say, the things that you can do with an iPad, what musicians do, and I understand iPads are the premium product. Uh, they start at 500 bucks compared to half that for a Nexus 7. Um, the other thing about an iPad, which is kind of cool, is it's 4x3, which, as it turns out, is perfect for sheet music. Most other tablets are 16 by 9 They're widescreen. They're really more designed for displaying movies and video. And so, yeah, so you, sh you want your sheet music to be, uh, you know, kind of fill the screen. You want those notes as big as they can be. You don't want to waste space. Right, definitely. Yeah. So, well, you. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's about how much money you have, really. If you can't afford a $500 iPad, and by the way, you might look at the refurbished iPads on the Apple Store, and you don't need to get the latest, greatest iPad by any means. You can get the last generation or even... An iPad th uh, third generation, it would work just fine for you. But there are uh, before you do before you decide, go look at the App Store for uh, on iTunes, and just look at all the musical notation uh, software out there. It's just remarkable. And it's because so many musicians use iPads. I sure will. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah, I appreciate the call. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you know you've heard me. I think if you've listened for any period of time, I'm not one of those people that just goes buy a Mac or buy an iPad. I, I really try to uh, tailor a recommendation to the needs of a person. And a lot of times I do recommend, frankly, uh, something like the Nexus 7, which, by the way, you can't get right now. It's out of stock. But there are other good uh, choices in the Android tablets that are very inexpensive. But uh, this is one case where the software is so good on the Apple side that getting an iPad, you just will open a world uh, for a musician, a world of stuff. Really amazing. Our show today brought to you by our good friends at Squarespace. Hey, are you ready to start your own uh, website? Or maybe you've got a website already, but you're not too happy with the service and support you're getting from your hosting company? you got to check out Squarespace. Squarespace is a hosting company. Yes, they host your site, but it's so much more. Squarespace tightly integrates the hosting with the software that's running on the site to make it very easy for you to create a state-of-the-art modern website. I mean, they these guys are brilliant. And, it, and it's so brilliant, you might not even know. You know, it's so well done, it's simple. But believe me, under the hood, this stuff is very sophisticated. Every Squarespace site, for instance, mobile responsive, it looks great on any size screen. 
You don't have a separate mobile site. It just looks great on a mobile device, on a giant screen. When you upload an image to your Squarespace website, they in behind the scenes automatically, they make nine different thumbnails at all different sizes so they can deliver the right image to the right size screen. They do this all without you worrying about it. You don't have to know any fancy technology. It's all drag and drop, point and click. You can add your social media feeds, images, beautiful portfolios, e-commerce on every single template at every single price level. Squarespace is really quite remarkable. And of course, if you have a question, if you want to know more, they have an incredible award-winning 24-7 customer service department right there in New York City. So you're getting help from the people who do the, the, the sites themselves. They also have wonderful webinars and videos so you can learn as you uh, as you go. They take care of the hosting. They take care of the scaling. They even give you a free domain name if you register for a year. I want you to visit Squarespace and try it free. You click the Get Started button. You don't need a credit card. You just you got two weeks to do anything you want. Set up the templates. Import your existing content. They've got importers for all the blog APIs. and You can really get a sense of what Squarespace can do for you. All I ask when you decide to buy... Use my name, Leo. You'll get 10% off your new account. Squarespace.com slash Leo. And use the offer code Leo for 10% off your brand new account. Starts as little as $8 a month, plus a free domain name when you subscribe for a year. Squarespace.com. Uh, Sandra on the line from San Diego. Hi, Sandra. Hi, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm great, thanks. It started to rain briefly here. Oh, I know. It's so weird. Here in California, we don't expect rain in the summer. No, no, we don't. We need it. We're in such a horrible Oh, drought. terrible drought. And yeah. then I saw that water main that burst in Los yeah. Angeles. I thought, that's, we need that. Get a bucket. I know. 20 million gallons. Oh. Jeez. I love San Diego, though. You live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's just, uh, it's it just is. great. It is. It's yeah. great. But, yeah. you know, you live just north of San Francisco, where hey. I lived also, and I love that, too. Of course. But I have a tablet question, too, yes. actually. Good. I'm looking for two tablets, one for a friend of mine, um, both of us just for basic emailing, web browsing, um, videos like on YouTube, etc. And he's looking for something, um, well, preferably both of us, like 9 to 10 inch screens because we're kind of old. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be. but um, No, 10 inches is, uh, is actually the sweet spot for most tablets. They yeah. now make seven and eight inch tablets. There's quite a few of them, um, right. and they're just like big phones. I mean, they're what you know. The truth is, they're making them in every size, so you can pick the size you want. The right. only thing I caution about with tablets, and you have really uh, three choices for operating systems: you have Windows, you have Android, and you have Apple's iOS. And all three are fine. All three are good. My only suggestion is some of the Android tablets you can buy them in gas stations. They're so cheap. They're eighty nine dollars. Don't. Don't right. you could be penny wise and pound foolish. There you may say, "Wow, that's I can get an eighty nine dollar tablet." You you will deeply regret it. So yeah. there are, especially in Android, well, only in Android. In fact, there are some really budget stuff that's not good. So expect to spend for a ten inch tablet at least two fifty to three hundred dollars. Okay, is, well, is that okay? Is it below? Is that above? For his tab, um, neither one of us can afford an iPad. Yeah, um, his budget is probably around 300 or less if possible he can probably go a little bit more but his deal is he would kind of like a detachable keep keyboard oh now you want a keyboard for that price you well, know that it, microsoft that. microsoft sells their surface pro for 500 dollars. what they don't tell you is oh you want a keyboard that's another 100 bucks yeah so, so keep adding a keyboard is going to add 100 bucks okay so now your budget's so, really blown Okay. That's a so, budget buster. You can get on any tablet, you can get a Bluetooth keyboard, whether you want to attach it or not. You can get a Bluetooth keyboard. So on any tablet you can? Almost any tablet will use a Bluetooth keyboard, yes. iPads, Androids, and uh, and even Windows will use Bluetooth keyboards. So, so but, it won't. But a, but a keyboard's going to be 100 bucks unless you have one in the in the closet. Right. But, okay, as long as they've got blue, the tablet has Bluetooth. And they all do. Oh, okay. Yep. Good to know. Yep. All right. So does he um, care he, about do you care about operating system? Is that it sounds like um, if you had the money, it sounds like you'd get an iPad, but you just don't want to spend that. Oh, much money. I absolutely would. Yeah, okay. I think um, Android is gonna be your best choice. That's what I figured. Yeah. Now can you recommend something good in the three hundred or less Let me see price what, range for you him? Know, the Nexus ten, I wonder if it's still for sale. 
Um, yes, yeah, a little pricey though. Uh, 16 gigabyte, which is not a lot of memory, is $400 for the Nexus 10. That is a great tablet. It's a unfortunately both the Nexus 7 and 10 are currently out of stock at Google, which tells me they're about to do new ones. But you might find oh. them on clearance somewhere at Best Buy. Has them. Some other ones have have uh, uh, you know refurbs, things like that. You might get down to 300. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. What's the Nvidia Shield cost? 300? Can't. Oh my God! The Nvidia Shield is 300 bucks. Wow. Now. Oh, that's the uh, portable. That's not the tablet. That's the old shield. Where's the tablet? Can't be that cheap. Can't be that cheap. It is 300 bucks. Now it's only 16 gig. This is an amazing tablet. It's really for gaming. Uh, but it's a very pure Android, so you'd be able to do anything you do with an Android. This is a good choice. You know what? I'm going to recommend that. Wow, it's smaller though, isn't it? It's not. It's not thirty. It's not ten inches. It's seven, isn't it? How big is the shield? I would say get a get a refurb by iPad. Are most of those people? Uh, are most of the uh, people selling uh, Nexus tablets uh, in stock, or are they? See, I think Google's about to replace them. Last year's iPad, three hundred bucks. That's a good deal. Let me uh, let's go check the Apple Store. Let's go let's go check the Apple refurb. Refurbished iPad. So you only want to get these from Apple. You don't want to get these from, you know, some other person. Uh, three thirty nine for an iPad Mini. She wants a. Here you go. Wow. Oh man, look at that. This is the uh, the 2012 iPad Retina, 16 gigs, is fourth generation, 300 bucks. That's what you should get. That's what you should get. Three to nine bucks for an iPad 2. Uh, it doesn't seem like such a good deal. But the fourth generation, that's great. I wouldn't get anything uh, uh, but this third generation or later. Third and fourth gen were very similar. And we'd just get a Retina. Make sure you get a Retina iPad. But yeah, there's plenty in that price range. 329 339 Don't get a 2. I wouldn't recommend that. Get a Retina. So this is at, this is at the Apple Store. I will put this in the show notes. Oops. No, she's probably yeah, still on the horn here. Yeah, she hasn't gone away. I can't talk to her, but she's still listening. So if you search for um, Apple refurbished iPads, don't buy them from anyone but the Apple Store. Store.apple.com. Uh, that's a great price. That's a great price. Anchor makes a $30 aluminum keyboard cover. All right, see? We've, we've found it for you. Here we go, Sandra. Go to the Apple Store, refurb, 300 bucks, and then for 30 bucks, you can get an anchor keyboard for the iPad. Costco has the Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 for 179 bucks. That's a good choice as well. The Asus T100 includes a keyboard. 350 bucks with full Windows 8.1. <laughs> Can you pay me money to, to buy that? This is the iPad Air. I like the Air, but it's a little pricey. I don't think you can get it for uh, so little. Thank you, chat room. Barnes & Noble Nook for 179 bucks. No, no. Ah. 
You sip while I sip. We shall sip together. It caffeinated. Mmm. There's nothing like caffeine. I love hearing Heather's voice, even when she's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice that we got Heather to do that? I'm really glad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Microsoft could pay me enough money to compromise my editorial integrity. It would cost $100 million. They could just buy the network, and then I'll say anything they want. No. My clock is 58 seconds fast. You know, I gotta. I should reset that. I have 102, 04, 05. Yeah, it is. It's a minute and some fast. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. And it's time to talk about mm, technology. Computers, the internet, home theater, smartphones, digital photography, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the number, 888-827-5536. About half an hour, our travel guru, Johnny Jet, will get off a plane and join us and tell us how to use technology to... Uh, to travel better, but we can answer any kind of uh, question. 8888-ASK-LEO. We'd love to hear from you. We were talking in the chat room, and uh, well, first of all, a couple of things. Uh, for Sandra, who uh, wanted a uh, iPad or something like it, a 10-inch tablet, uh, for under or around $300, of course, the iPad starts at $500, Ha, unless you go to the Apple Store and you go to the refurbished section, and I have found fourth generation iPads for 300 bucks, 10 inches, only 16 gigs of storage. But nowadays that's enough because you don't really, unless you're going to put movies on there, you generally don't load up an iPad with anything but applications. You stream the music, you might even stream the movies, put Netflix on there, and you don't need a lot of storage for content. Unless you're getting on an airplane then. You know, even then, you'll have a few free gigs. You could put five or six movies, you know. Uh, but that's a good price, 300 bucks for a fourth-generation iPad. I wouldn't get anything uh, earlier than the third generation, but the third and fourth were very comparable and would be fine. You'll also, if you shop around, you'll find uh, lots of tablets, even less than that, Galaxy uh, Notes for uh, and uh, tabs for uh, 200 and 250 bucks. Shouldn't have too much trouble. As I said, get it from a big brand name, though. Samsung, Apple. Uh, don't don't get uh, the, some of the weirdos, the cheap. If it's really cheap, like the Pantex, often they don't come with all the stuff you want. They're not reliable. So, it's, you know, don't go too cheap here. But, boy, if you can get an iPad for 300 bucks and you can, refurbished, I would. Now, when you get it from Apple refurbished or when you get any refurbished technology from the company that made it, generally that stuff they sold but was returned almost immediately. That They're not allowed to sell it as new. So it, it's generally just the same as new. They, they have the same warranties. It's just somebody opened it and had a buyer's remorse or decided to get something else, and you can't sell it. Once it's been opened, you can't sell it as new. They sell it as refurb. Don't get it from a third party. That's often a different story. Those really are used usually. If you get it from Apple, if you get it from Dell, get it from the company that made it, then generally that's a good deal. We were talking about market share. Here's a stunner. Uh, Net Applications is a company that every month comes out with numbers about how many people use different operating systems. And they, they do it in, in an interesting way. They actually look at information they glean from people visiting websites. So when you visit a website, your browser, your operating system, your computer, your tablet tells the website a number of things, including what operating system you're using. Uh, they've compiled these numbers, and bizarrely, for the first time I can ever remember, the current version of Windows actually has shrunk in market share. Windows 8.1, actually you combine Windows 8 and 8.1, dropped uh, 0.06 percentage points. Their market share is 12.48% of the total market. Now, you might say, well, I mean, that's a tiny drop. That's not a bad thing. And it isn't, except that this is the current version of Windows. It's sold on every brand new computer. Millions of computers are sold every month. It should be going up 20%, 10% every single month. Typically, Microsoft will say, we sold 20 million copies of Windows this month. It's always 20 million copies. So a shrinking market share, fewer people using Windows 8 
is a very bad sign. I can't think of any time in history that any current Microsoft operating system has gone down. They should always be going up double digits. Uh, Windows XP went down, but you'd expect that. They're 25%. Wait a minute. Yes, they're double. Twice as many people use Windows XP worldwide as Windows 8. <laughs> At least the number is shrinking. Now, just to put this in perspective, there's still people using Windows Vista, 3%. <laughs> Linux, 1.68%, tiny, tiny market share. Apple, tiny market share, 4%. It's been 4% for 20 years. Windows 7 is the biggie. More than half of all computers on the net today are using Windows 7. That's probably the right thing. That's I, Microsoft. I've I, a, a I can't think of any big computer company stumbling this badly. Windows 8 was a just a terrible stumble for Microsoft. It cost their CEO his job, Steve Ballmer. He retired early. Uh, it cost them uh, a lot of money. And a considerable amount of, um, um, you know, brand loyalty, I think. It's really, really sad. And uh, and I don't recommend it. I really don't. You, I, when I buy a new computer, of course I'm buying it with Windows 8. You probably should do the same because they're under the hood. There's lots of improvements. But, man, it's tough to use. It just really is. Randy uh, on the line. He is calling from Bakersfield, California. Hi, Randy. Hey, Leo. This is Randy. Um, I'm the guy that sent you the cigars a while back. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I've got a mid-2012 uh, um, iMac computer. Yeah. It's got the Intel i5 in it. Yeah. I'm having trouble with the, with the Wi-Fi. It keeps going in and out. I took it over to Apple Care, and they checked over the the radio that's in it. They checked over the they cleaned it while it was in there, and all. And I've even contacted uh, my cable company, Bright House, and they adjusted the ping and everything. But it's still going in and out. So, uh, um, what's happening is you're losing internet access. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And when you say in and out, do you look at the menu bar and you see that you don't have any Wi-Fi? No, it, it shows that I have Wi-Fi, but when I go into my settings and I go to the um, to my network, it it shows that everything but the first the first two lights are, are off, which is telling me that it's not receiving the uh, internet signal. Well, it sounds like your router, not your Macintosh. Well. Um, I'm using the cable from the uh, from uh, or the I'm using a router from the yeah cable I understand company. I understand one thing to try and this is very common routers fail frequently they're kind of a cheap consumer device that uh, doesn't doesn't wear well if you unplug and you know reset the router by taking the power out wait five seconds yeah. put it back in does that fix it no it does not it does not uh, it I mean it goes comes back on yes. But within a matter of, it does uh, fix 15, it. Twenty minutes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That does fix it. But then it goes out again in fifteen minutes. Then it goes out again. Yeah, yeah that's, that's your router. That's not. I don't think that's your. It could be your Mac. It absolutely could be. But it sure sounds like it's the router. If unplugging it, plugging it back in, now the Mac's online. It fixed mm -hmm. it. It didn't fix it for long. I understand. Your router failed again in fifteen minutes. It sounds like it's the router, not the Mac. Okay. Now, one other way to try this is to turn off Wi-Fi on your Mac and, right. turn it, and turn it back on. Now, if it's the Mac, that will often fix it. If it if it doesn't fix it, it may well be the router. It's hard to di diagnose these, I understand. But generally speaking, resetting the router fixes it. That's not the computer. That's the router. Okay. All righty. Yeah, I'd call the router com the cable company. You know, just say, hey, can I have a new one? They're renting you that anyway. <laughs> you know, you don't own that. Just say, I want, don't even say, can I have? Say, I want a new one. And uh, frequently, uh, what will happen is you'll get a more modern one that'll give you better speeds, too. It's not unusual for routers to go bad. Really, what a router is, is a very cheap computer. That's all it is. And, and it's so cheap that they fail.
8888 Ask Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Let's go to Mark in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Mark. Leo Laporte. Hey, Leo. Uh, here in the stats, I guess I'm not one of the only ones. I'm an HP holdout. Ah. Uh. And I, uh, I have a computer, a laptop that I bought for somebody like three years ago. It works fine. Everything's perfect. But I never went in and set my own administrator. I just went from the uh, the just for when you turn it on and it has a little chess palm says administrator. Yeah. Because I'm the only one that uses a computer. Right. Well, then I took your advice and decided Ooh. to create a non-administrator uh, user. You know, I really should have been more clear that you should always create an administrator account first. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I probably didn't well, make that clear, did I? Well, it forced me to create an administrator. Oh, good. Account, which okay. I did. Oh, good. But then I lost my original administrator information. Lost all my favorites. Lost mm. all, I lost a little bit of... So the trick the promise. trick is to not get rid of your old account, but create a new administrator account. Right. Log into the administrator account and then modify your old account to be a limited user or a standard user. Okay. Is that uh, the steps you took? So no. what you don't want to do is now, it sounds like you're now logging in as your administrator. I'm logging in as, yeah, as the administrator yeah. that I created, yeah. yeah. So, so that's not what you want to do. <laughs> right. Is there <laughs> any you, way to what go What you back? want to do, no, no, you haven't lost it. If you look, uh, if you go to in the administrator, uh, you're logged in administrator, if you go look at the users and accounts, you should see your old account right there. It's not there, though. It's gone. Yeah, it's, I've just got the two that I created, and the guest, it says guest account is logged off. But the old one with the little chest palm... Uh, it's just gone. Man, just gone. Huh. Yeah, and you didn't delete it. I did not delete it. Yeah, it shouldn't uh, be gone. I mean, uh, I don't know why it would be gone. That's not what it's supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so normally what you would do is exactly that. So you, you created... It's good. The uh, Windows was smart enough to say, well, look, dude, if you're going to be a limited user, you better create an administrative account. You did. Yeah. It but, sounds like maybe the user account got damaged at some point somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, yeah. I have, you tried, have you tried... Have you tried... Okay. So you were using the original account created... Right. Have you tried logging in in safe mode? The chat room saying you might be able to see it, or it should still be available in safe mode. Have you tried that? In safe mode, I'm not sure how. Yeah. How. So you reboot the machine or turn off the machine, hold uh -huh. hold down the F8 key as you turn it on, and uh -huh. it'll give you a startup menu. One of them will be safe mode with networking. Choose that. Sorry. Okay. And that, that, what that is is a limited set of uh, drivers and. Uh, that's odd. I, I'm just I'm looking at what the chat room's suggesting uh -huh. uh, to see if if anybody's encountered this. This is not the normal behavior, but I think it might have something to do with what kind of account you were using up until you did this. So right. just so people kind of are up to up uh, to speed on all this, what we we tell you is not not really. Ideally, you shouldn't be using XP anymore. It's 13 years old, and <laughs> uh, and and the new version of Windows is better. And by the way, Microsoft is no longer offering security patches for XP. That's the big that was the big event that happened in April. So, right. but what we've said and you obviously listened is you if you still ha if you still have to use XP for a variety of reasons, it, it, don't use it as an administrative user. Whatever permissions you have when you're using the computer, the bad guys get too. So if you are day in day out using it as a limited user then they don't have the ability to install their malware and you're much much safer like 96 percent of all the attacks are disabled by that one step alone right uh and so that's a really good thing for everybody on every computer but uh, something might have gone wrong with that hp in the sense um that the c account you were using the default account I'm wondering. Try logging in the safe mode, dude. That's that's the first thing. So, so just turn it off, and as I turn it off, shut it down. Shut it down when you when you push the on button. Hold down F8, 
and uh -huh. it'll give you a menu of commands, and one of them will be safe mode. See if you can see your account there. Thank you very much for your help. I'll give it a try. Yeah, see if it works. <laughs> All right. All right, take care. Yeah. I, uh, and at that point... Um, you, you'll see actually several accounts. You'll see the new one, the new administrator account you created. You'll probably see the original default administrator account. And and maybe the issue, and the chat room seems to think this might, or somebody in the chat room seems to think this might be the case, is that original, if you were using the base administrator account as your day-in, day-out account, that may not be convertible to a standard or limited user. Um In which case, you might be forced to use to set it back to administrator. Um, and that seems like, I mean, that will at least get you back to the setup that you had. Now, all you've lost is your customized icons and all that stuff. So all your apps should still be there and all that. And it really is safer to use it uh, that way. The other thing you should do if you're going to still use XP by is don't use Internet Explorer anymore as your browser. Uh, the last version of Internet Explorer you could use on XP, I think that was 8. Not safe. Use uh, Download and use Chrome. Google said we're going to keep that up to date at least for another year or two for XP users. Google Chrome will be a much safer browser for you to use. So if you... Uh, cr but the key is not to use the administrator account, either a system administrator account or one you've created. Use a limited user account. I'm not sure what's going on. Some OEMs in, the, in that era, and I think HP was one of them, did a weird thing, a very bad thing, that when you first logged in, you weren't encouraged. What, what should happen when you get a new machine? You should be encouraged to create a limited user account that you use day in, day out. You say, okay, welcome to your brand new PC. Let's create an account for you. And... I understand they don't want tech support calls, so maybe they're going to say, we'll make this an administrator account. You should you should then change it to a limited user. But they should create a brand new, fresh account for you. But remember, these companies don't want, the last thing they want is a tech support call. So in those bad old days, many companies, you turn on the computer, you just start using it. And unfortunately, that account is may may have been locked in as administrator. I think that this probably is the case with this one. So you may you may have some issues with it. You may actually lose some of the desktop icons and stuff. But I would encourage you just to create a limited user account, a new one, set it up the way you like it. It's not going to take you that long to get it to the way it was. All the apps are still there. All your documents should still be there. I do hope you didn't delete that account. If you go to safe mode and the user accounts, you see the administrator... You'll be able to log in as the administrator and check uh, to see if the other accounts are, are there. Maybe they're just hidden, and in which case, as administrator, you can unhide them. There is an account called administrator, and then there's an account with administrator rights. Those are two different things. You do not ever want to use the account that was created by HP calls administrator. I think you were, because I think that's how they did it in those days. Terrible. Terrible. 8888, ask Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. The chat room is my best friend. If you had an administrator account and a limited user account on a brand new computer, that would be confusing to normal users. Yeah, that's probably how they think, but it's wrong. They need to educate users. The right way to do that, and I think nowadays the computers, don't they generally? Oh, I don't know. Windows is such a nightmare. What uh, what you should be do? Yes, I agree. H Windows bites and HP makes the teeth bigger. I agree, Jeff. <laughs> what you should be what 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 should happen? You'll get a new computer. They go, "Hi, welcome to your new computer. Your new computer will have at least three accounts: an administrator account that should only be used when you need to have complete access to everything, a guest account." that can be used by any guest, but none of it will pres will be preserved, and your day-in, day-out account, your regular user account. Let's create that regular user account now. What's your name? You know, something like that. Explain that. 
Linux does that, I'm sure. Oh, and things like, now, make sure you use a nice, strong password with that account, and don't forget it, or you're screwed. Yeah, no, every, and HP was among the worst, but every company did this differently. My suspicion is HP, because they really were aimed at the least sophisticated users, probably didn't bother you with anything, just said, let's go, <laughs> let's start using it. <laughs> He, uh, so I don't think he erased his account, but he did what I had suggested, which was he tried to create a new account. Uh, and, or no, he tried to downgrade his account. And H, the Windows said, no, you have to create an administrator account first, which he did. Then he logged in the administrator account and he could no longer see the other account. So that was weird. I don't remember back 13 years ago to what HP used to do with uh... Let's go to Paris. Here's our travel guru himself, Mr. Johnny Jet. Every week he joins us from some place all over the globe to talk about using technology to travel better. Hey, Johnny. How are you? I'm great. Now I'm going to look carefully here at you're obviously not home because you've got a chandelier and a four-poster right. bed. Uh, not had that in my home. And uh, let's see, draperies. They look. Um, you're you're in a hotel. You I'm gonna right. I'm gonna guess. I don't know. I th I think it's a little too nondescript. You want to give us any well, hints? I was, gonna, I was gonna show out the window, but I don't have a great view. But I'm it, on a I'm on a lake. On a lake. I'm in I'm in a, I'm in a famous baseball town. Oh, you're in Cooperstown. You got it. Oh, I used to go to vacation. Are you at the Cooperstown Inn? Where are you staying? No, I'm at I'm at uh, the Otisaga. Otisaga, that's the classy place. Yeah, this is. This oh, is what a great see? restaurant they have at the Otisaga too. So, so I'm here with Talk Events, T A U C K. You know these guys are based out of my home state of Connecticut, and They're, they run these really high end tours. They do river cruises too, don't they? They do. They do river cruises. They do safaris. They do everything all around the world. But I hear anyway, good things about them. Are you I'm there here. for the Hall of Fame ceremony? Well, they had a special event with Ken Burns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Ken Burns did a, uh, you know, he did a talk to our group. He did the, a documentary Necro. on a baseball that was incredible. Phil That's Necro, right. the old knuckleballer. I just he just pitched against me. I just got I just got a hit off of a you Hall got of Fame a, baseball player. You got a hit off Phil Necro? <laughs> I just put I just posted it on Twitter. His knuckleball didn't fool you? Well, it did fool me, but I still got a hit somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell him when he's seventy five. Uh well the, hey, the guy is amazing. Any way you can, can get still it. play. He must have threw hundred and seventy <laughs> pitches today. The guy's amazing and That's he gave a so great neat. talk yesterday. And there was also a woman named Lois Youngin who was from uh, the League of Their Own. You know, she was one of the all girl, all American girls league player in the movie League of Their Own. Wait, but you got a hit with that batting stance? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's Lois, by the way, playing second base. Oh wow, what fun! And this is at the uh, Cooperstown Hall of Fame field. This is this is Double Day Field. Double yeah. Abner Abner Double Day Field. Yeah, one of the oldest fields in America. 1920, it was built. I love Cooperstown. I do, and the Lake Otsego. And oh, you're there. You're you're in one of my favorite places. We used to go there every year for a vacation. You like what it? A spot to go. Yeah, what a spot to go. Seriously, it's three and a half hours outside of New York City. I flew into New York, by the way, and when I landed two nights ago. I was in a hurry to go see my dad for dinner, and I was going to take an Uber because I wanted to talk on my phone. Because usually I take the train. Yeah. And I go to I go to request a Uber, and it says your account's been banned. What? And I'm like, what? How can I be banned? I'm always nice to. You're all Johnny the Jet. Don't they know who you are? So, so I just wrote a whole story on it. So this is my first real problem with Uber. So I was depending on them, and um, did they explain and I had a, why you got banned? It took a while. I didn't find out for. Uh, I sent them a tweet and I sent them a message. But it turns out, I I lost a credit card a couple of weeks ago, which was a big no no. Yeah. And I canceled it right away when I found out. But I forgot to update my oh, Uber account. Okay. Because I, I I have a bunch of credit cards because I'm always trying to yeah. you know maximize my miles. And so the credit card that I lost was on my Uber account. Yeah. And it was working in Los Angeles for some reason. I guess because I had a large credit because I kept referring my friends. 
But when I changed locations and I and it asked me for a new credit card, it said, you know, I scanned my new credit card and it says all of a sudden it says your account's been banned. I'm like, what? They, you know what? They shouldn't. The, the problem here is the word banned. Exactly. That is my problem. That's all. They just should. They should have said, hey, there's a problem with your credit card. You won't be able to use Uber exactly. until you give us a new one. But exactly. banned sounds like you did something horrible. I know. I was like, did some driver report me for something that I didn't do? Yeah, that, that's just anyway. a language issue. They shouldn't use the word banned. That's all. Exactly. It took yeah. 24 hours to figure it out. But my tip is, if you are using Uber, make sure that your credit card <laughs> is yeah. valid yeah. before you change. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to take a while to, to do it. So I got a travel app for you, by the way. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, I was up in beautiful Alberta, Canada. I called in from there, and you thought I was in Switzerland? Bamf. <laughs> That's right. I was Lake in Banff. But so I met with one of my colleagues. He's a professional photographer, Gary Art. He's won all kinds of awards. And um, so we're out there and we're taking a picture of the same sunset. And I take a picture of mine on my phone and all of a sudden I look at his and I was like, oh my God, what, how did you get that <laughs> shot? My photo looks like, does not look good. And uh, so he goes, oh, I use Pro HDR app. Oh. So it's $1.99. It's available for on iOS and Android. And I, it's the best dollar ninety nine you will spend if you like to take photos on your phone. Because seriously, and my wife quickly downloaded it, and she took a picture that I think could win a win a win an award. Because what this app does, it basically takes two photos and automatically lines and blends the images. Mm -hmm. So whenever you try to take a picture of a sunset, you're usually not going to get the you know the grass or the mountains or whatever. It's just going to get the sunset. So it's not great. But if you can get them both at the same time and you hold the camera perfectly still. And it will just, you will be amazed at these photos. So Pro I highly HDR. recommend Pro HDR. It's by iApps. I've been using it for years, actually. I, I, oh, I, so you do use it. I second the, the uh, nomination, yeah. Okay. It's re I used it on the iPhone. I didn't realize it was that for Android now, so I'm going to have to run over and get it. Yep, dollar ninety nine. Yeah. That's a good deal. It's not good. You you don't want to do HDR when there's people moving around and stuff. It's really for landscape, stuff where exactly. nothing's moving. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. that. Nice so, app. Good choice. All right. And so the other app, by the way, that uh, Gary uses is Adobe Photo Express. Yes. Adobe Photo yes. Express. So this one's free and it's available on iOS and Android. And what, you know, you can quickly make, you know, make your pictures look better by either cropping them, fixing the red eye, flipping the photos, straightening them. So I highly recommend getting this one as well. And literally, he, he made this photo look so good in two minutes. And when I'm sitting there, you know, I thought my photo was good, but it looked like nothing compared to his. Yeah, that's so free, great, which is nice. You don't have to pay for that yes. one. Yeah. Yes. So and I highly recommend those two. Another one, I'll add one. I'll add a third one, as long as we're talking photographic apps for your iPhone or your okay. Android. Snapstream, this, this is made by Google, was originally by a company called Nick, which charged for it. But when Google bought Nick, they uh, started offering Snapstream for free. And, you know, if you have Snapstream, Photoshop Express, and, a, a, you know, Pro HDR, you really pretty much, could, you can do amazing things with your, your camera. What phone yeah. do you, uh, you carry an iPhone? I can, actually, no, my wife has an iPhone. Yeah. I, have a, I have an iPad mini, but I also have, I carry my Windows phone mostly for the, um, the photos. Great I don't, cameras I don't, on those I, Windows phones, I'll tell you, the best cameras I don't, out I, there. I don't, I, I love the camera, but I don't love the you know the interface. But and I also use an Android, and this one's a Sony Xperia, which oh, that's I a good don't one. love. No, I don't love it. Sony's supposed to have good cameras too in there. The, the camera is not is nothing not, not compared great. to this Windows yeah, camera. Yeah. I mean, this Windows. That's why I carry it around. Snapseed. Like it's a, it's like, I said the wrong like name. Another camera. Snapseed, Snapseed, not Snapstream. Snapseed. Snapseed. Okay, good Thank you, it down, Jimmy Ola, in the chat room, it. correcting me. JohnnyJet.com, so, that's the website to go to check in with Johnny. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to. Uh, no, I was going to say uh, there's some good deals out. I just sent a deals newsletter. There's a deal from New York on American and U.S. Airways to St. Lucia for 200 round trip. Whoa. And, and there, and there was a bunch the of other deals in there. Just spend the weekend at that point. Just go for yeah. the weekend. There was actually a t ticket from, I think it was from uh, L.A. to Kuwait last week for four hundred dollars is kuwait a great vacation spot i did it not a great it doesn't one, sound like but, it is. but if you want but you could walk miles, to dubai from there so i don't know if you want to walk but you can definitely take a short hop <laughs> you don't mind the desert but if you want to see Spring new water. countries which you know everyone yeah. you know all my friends want to do it's yeah. it's a great way to how much to kuwait 
I think it was four fifty. I got I got to look at my uh, newsletter. Round trip. Cheap. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's why you so. want to go to JohnnyJet.com, subscribe to his free and travel newsletter, follow him on Twitter, and uh, and Instagram too, and of course every week here on this show. Johnny, safe travels. Thank you. Take, Take care. care, you too. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, Pro HDR, good choice. I like that. I just it wasn't installed on here, so I just installed it. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, didn't realize they had an Android version. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, yes, I love it. Yes, very good, very good. And you got to come out and do one of these tours sometime, <gasps> or come out to Cooperstown. So jealous. On your own. I love. We used to go. My dad was a big base. Is a big baseball fan, so we'd go to the hall. Go to Cooperstown because of the Hall of Fame. And uh, Farmer's Museum is fun there. And, uh, yep, it's right here. I used to I buy a horseshoe nail there. ring every year, and then it would rust out by the next summer, and I'd get a new one. And uh, <laughs> Oh, I have such fond memories. And the, and it's so funny, the Otsego Hotel, that's like the, that's the, it's really old, too. Like, it's 100 years old, right? 1909. Yeah. It was, it was uh, built. And, and it's just this, a classic. This is where all the Hall of Famers stay, by the way, during the, um, oh, what during fun. the infection. They they rent Major League Baseball rents out this hotel and it's it's just filled with the Major League Hall of Famers and their families. First time I was ever called Sir, because I was like eight, was at that hotel in the restaurant there. <laughs> the way you really? call me Sir, and I remember that vividly. But I remember having great meals, Parker House rolls, in that uh, in that restaurant there in the uh, uh, I, hotel. I ate there last night on the balcony wow. by myself, Aww. and it was very nice. Ah, what a great trip! So I'm interested in Talc in terms of the, the river cruises, but uh, so you think they just so got, they do I think like they just special, got into river cruising. I think it's new, yeah. Yeah, they just got yeah, into it. I yeah. mean, but these guys, there's some people on this trip who've been on 34 Talc tours. <sighs> and I was like, are you kidding me? These guys have been all over the world. See, they, if you find them, a high-end tour company, a deluxe tour company that you like, it's worth it. Because you know you're going to get a really good experience. Yeah. They stick in over and over. People have been to Antarctica, all over Southeast Asia, Croatia. I mean, I've been meeting so many interesting people, and they've been all, I mean, I'm like, they're, they're making me jealous of their travels. I am going to have to check this out. I'm going to have to check this out. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. We'll have take fun care in Cooperstown. And, uh, I will. Say hi I'll, to my, uh, my old friends. <laughs> I will. All take right. Care. Take care, John. Bye bye. Bye bye. What is this? Looks like a bomb. Another phone? <laughs> no. Well, if it is, it's in pieces. Oh. It's some sort of ham thing, I think. It's a kit. Oh, look at this. Wow. Wow. Teachers receive ETAO self-powered shortwave radios. What is this? This is uh, from... Um, Thomas Witherspoon, Ears to Our World founder director. You may recall back in 2010, I called with a quick tech question. As a result, you helped me secure and encrypt my donor data from my NGO, Ears to Our World, ETOW.org, which distributes self powered shortwave radios in remote regions around the globe. Since then, you've influenced my choice to relocate ETOW's web hosting to Squarespace. Love them. Would you and Dick consider putting the enclosed Uber Simple? flashlight kit it's their humana light it runs for weeks on dead batteries so you have dead batteries don't throw them out put them in a flashlight how cool i will we will definitely do this i'll pass this along to dick the e-tau humana light will shine continuously for one to two weeks on the residual voltage from a dead battery with a new alkaline, they'll run for a full four week continuously. Well, it's LEDs, right? ETAO works with teachers and children in third world countries that put to use a ubiquitous waste product, a plentiful supply of cheap, used up batteries to power the Humana light. This device, su device supports reading, health, and other needs after daylight. Oh, yeah, see, this kerosene is a big issue. That's what they use in a lot of these places. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo. Ba -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Here's the gadget man, the Gizwiz himself, Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer and the Gizwiz. And he joins us each and every week to talk gadgets. And I have one for you and you have one for me. 
How yeah, I, I heard Did you. Did you see uh, me showing this off here? Yeah, I love that idea. So this is, it, you know. Go ahead. I, I knew batteries, when they stopped working, had a little bit of power in them. Right. And years ago on the Gizwiz, I had this a, a, a dumb little monster thing, and you put dead batteries in them, and his eyes could blink for like a week. Yeah. So it was just a silly way to know you got every bit of juice out of the battery. But your idea is is great. Well, don't give me credit. Give it to, okay. to Tom Witherspoon, Thomas Witherspoon. He's the founder and director of a, a nonprofit, an NGO, they call them, uh, called Ears to Our World. They supply shortwave radios uh, to uh, impoverished uh, people uh, in third world countries around the world so that they can connect to the world. But this is the new thing that they're doing. Uh, this is called the Humanolite. Now, we've talked about this before. Because kerosene, which is widely used in the developing world for reading and places where there's no yes. electricity, but it's very dangerous. The fumes are bad for your lungs. And so there are a number of nonprofits and charities trying to put together alternatives. Well, this is such a great idea. This is from ETOW.org. They call this the Humana Light, and it's exactly what it does. It, uh, it's a, a simple circuit. Uh, that's that gives back. They say they use old batteries to uh, create a, a flashlight that runs for weeks. These are on depleted batteries, and they're that and they're great. and they're distributing these throughout the developing world where there is no electricity, and they're used for uh, reading, for health, other needs after daylights, uh, and uh, and since there are lots of used up batteries, and we don't know what to do with them because you have to recycle them and you shouldn't throw them away. This is a really great idea. So if you want to know more. ETOW.org. Now, did you bring your soldering iron, Dick? Because the kits uh -oh. that I got. <laughs> well, uh -oh. let's see, there's a resistor. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. You're going to have to put I think this... my batteries are going back into my red eyed blue. I'm sure, I'm sure they offer these assembled as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here's one that's assembled. I just opened the uh, one that you would put together yourself. Oh, okay. But, but this is because LEDs are so efficient, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Here's I have a. Well, used you know, they had the problem with LED lights that dimmers, the old dimmers could not shut them off. Right. Because they took so little electricity. You couldn't go. You low put it enough. all the way down to dim. It stayed lit. Look at that. So there you go. This is uh, this is the assembled kit, and there's an old depleted battery, and it's it'll it'll says that it's a flat. Oh, the light will work for weeks. Yeah. So that's mine. What do you got? Okay, well, you know, I have a gadget that it turns out you have too, because I mentioned it to some of that twit, and they said, wait. Leah was using one of these. <laughs> it is, we're in the height of the barbecue season, oh, especially... Yeah. Uh, oh, I love people. this. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. It is the, you want to invite the barbecue dragon, dragon. <laughs> to your event. And <clears throat> so this is a neat little guy. It's actually a fan with a rheostat on it, a big clip, uh, a flame-resistant base, a gooseneck neck so that you can fold this guy over and aim it at the charcoals. And you know, when I was a kid, I didn't realize you like the charcoals and that's just the beginning. <laughs> you have to stand there and wait and wait yeah. and wait yeah. Yeah. until they get down to, you know, glowing embers, which is ideal for cooking. So at the barbecue dragon, you can reduce it from uh, like 15 minutes to like five minutes. Well, you you actually did it on you on uh, your well, barbecue. I, I did, I did. And by the way, you probably could accomplish the same thing with a hair dryer. Uh, oh, that's it. Yes, that's interesting. Because it's really that's yeah. kind of what it is. But it's a hair dryer with a big gooseneck on it. Yes, exactly. So you don't have to hold it. Right. And uh, but it but, it, but it the works pretty good. To, yeah, it works fast. Yeah. I mean, if so, the, it's just like you know what it's like a blacksmith's bellows. You know where they. Oh yeah, I use. Time when I was a child. Every, whenever you're making horseshoes or, or yeah, or, my mother would say, "You want them to have dinner? Could you run out in the barn and yeah, make me a pot?" Exactly. <laughs> so I could so, cook exactly. it. Exactly. So it's just like that, but and really, it just takes a little bit of air, and this is not heated. It's just, really it's a blow dryer and a gooseneck lamp. Exactly. Um, exactly. But but it works on batteries, so you don't have to have a plug near your grill. Exactly. And I, did you know? Worked. Did you see the USB port on yours? Yeah. What was that for? 
<laughs> the USB port is so that you can put in rechargeable batteries, ah. and then you can run it from any of the uh, outboard charges, or you can plug it into a cigarette lighter and charge it on the way driving to a picnic. Yeah. Or you can, oh, there you go. Yeah, here you I have the, the from video. It's on YouTube, uh, uh, youtube.com slash before you buy. If you search for Dragon, you'll find it. Um, and I have a little video. The only problem with this is it blows the ashes all around like crazy. But boy, it it does it does get the, uh, the, the coals. They get really hot, really, really hot. It's kind yeah, of, they, it's kind of amazing. Uh, it, it is, it just, and it's, it's um, I think you had, you know, it's $20 more than I think you thought it's it was. It's expensive because, well, I quoted the, the pay, th too low payments of 29 Oh, okay. okay. It's, it's twice as much as I said it was uh, because. Yeah, except on Amazon. It is uh, fifty nine ninety five yeah. on the company website, but it's forty nine ninety five on Amazon, and it is Amazon Prime. If you happen to be a member, and then it's you, free shipping. And if you ever need to make horseshoes, yeah, your grill. My, I'm making them now. <laughs> <laughs> your grill and the barbecue drag is all you need. You know, at sixty bucks, a little much, but I think fifty, maybe not, maybe not too much. I think that's a better yeah. price. Yeah. Um, it is, or just use a blow dryer. I mean, it really is just like having a blow dryer, except you don't have to hold it. Yeah. The other yeah, thing that, they say: uh, be careful, don't put it over the flame because it'll actually melt. Uh, <laughs> you want to blow air at the from at it, at okay. it from a distance. <laughs> well, I thought it was stainless. I don't know. There's there's parts on it that would probably melt. Oh, okay. okay. You definitely don't want to cook it. You'll find Dick at the uh, at his website, gizwiz.biz, and more information about the Barbecue Dragon there, as well as a chance to play the what the heck, what the heck is it contest. A uh, close-up picture of a gadget. Not that. What is that? The Toast Tight. Oh, Toast Tight. Oh, my word. Yes. Toast spread. And, it was a panini maker. Yeah, it's a panini maker from the late 40s that a company uh, reactivated and... Are selling it again, and wow. it's great. But you have put it over the stove. Yeah, over the stove. See, you go every time I go to Dick's site. There's something cool. Here is the uh, gadget. He doesn't know what he ordered it. Can't remember what it is. Uh, if you want to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine, help Dick out either with the right answer or the crazy. Uh, yeah, answer. I must say one of your listeners did. Oh, they said they this, figured this is what you're looking for. Oh. I mean, the ad was all in uh, Japanese, so. <laughs> You still don't know what it is, but you I still don't know what it is. You know where you got it. <laughs> I know where I got it, and I know it's still being sold. Dick D. Bartolo, Gizwiz.biz. Stick around the Giz Fizz coming up in just a moment. And I want to thank uh, the folks at ETOW, Ears to Our World, Thomas Witherspoon, uh, for sending along these light kits. I mean, it's good to have something you could do with uh, used up batteries. And if you want to know more about their good works around the world to get. Uh, shortwave radios to the most remote regions of the world so they can listen to the tech guy and say, what is he talking about? Go to etow.org, and I bet you they sell these uh, Humana lights. It's probably a good fundraiser for them, as well as uh, get them out to uh, people in need so they don't have to use kerosene all around the world. I want to thank you, Kim Schaffer. I've been saying her name wrong for two years now. Finally got it right. Kim Schaffer for filling in for Heather Hammond. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Nathan Staten, our musical director. I'm Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And have a great Geek Week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPad on iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today and our weekly roundtable show This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.